On the pole for the third straight year, Ken Trader. And alongside, trying for his first 500 win, Dale Earnhardt. Ken Trader, he's the kind of guy that will race anytime, anywhere, including those tough little bullpens where anything goes when the green flag drops. Qualifying third, Jeff Woodine, the 86 winner, and two-time champion, Bill Elliott, outside. Row three is Harry Gant and rookie 500 driver Jimmy Spencer. In row four, it's Mark Martin from Arkansas and Phil Parsons. In row five, Darrell Waltrip, defending champion, and Bobby Hillen. Darrell Waltrip, he's proud these days of the new priority <laughs> in his life. You say, what can make me feel this way? Jessica. <laughs> Give me a kiss. <laughs> Making his 30th start, seven-time winner Richard Petty, alongside from the Northwest Derek Cope. In row seven, it's A.J. Foyt, the 72 champ, and Mississippi's Lake Speed. Row eight is Mike Alexander in the Bobby Allison team car and Davey Allison. Row nine is Butch Miller and Irving Irvine from California. In row 10, it's Ricky Rudd and Terry Labonte, second here in 86. Row 11 is Sterling Marlin and Kyle Petty. Kyle Petty, a number 42 car, has given up a singing career to focus on racing only this year, but he still could sing a good song. Row 12 is the rookie Jack Pennington and Michael Waltrip from Kentucky. Row 13, Wisconsin's Alan Kowicki and Larry Pearson. In row 14, Joe Rutman and Florida's Rick Wilson with a new team. Row 15 is an outstanding rookie, Rich Bickle and Morgan Shepard. Row 16, Neil Bonnet from Alabama and Dick Trickle out of Wisconsin Rapids, Wisconsin. Row 17 is Brett Bodine and Hutch Strickland. Row 18, Arizona's Phil Markdahl and the 21-year-old rookie, Robbie Moroso from Connecticut. Row 19, Jimmy Means out of Alabama, defending Winston Cup champion, Rusty Wallace. Rusty Wallace, he'll cinch up the seatbelt on anything that goes fast. That's him. For row number 20, rookie Jerry O'Neill from Auburn, New York, and Jimmy Horton, winner of the ARCA 200 last Sunday. Row 21 is Eddie Beerswell and Dave Marcus in his 23rd Daytona 500 start. And then there's the crew from Days of Thunder. All the way in the rear, two cars for Nashville's Bobby Hamilton and the two-time Grand National Champion, Tommy Ellis. And as the field completes its first preliminary lap, we pause to remember a driver who wanted to make his 68th Winston Cup start. Slick Johnson, who lost his life here at Daytona, injuries sustained in the ARCA 200 last Sunday. He may have never won here. He'd only run this race twice in 80 and 85, finishing in 14th and 20th. But he will always be remembered as a champion at Myrtle Beach in Timminsville. We'll miss Slick Johnson. One lap to green, and the great American race will pour it on into turn number one as they'll escalate speeds to over 195 miles per hour. And there you see the pole sitter, Schrader, falling back, falling back all the way to the rear for the start. What do you think about the emotions Ken Schrader feels now? The fastest car three years running. Wrecks and crashes, and now he's starting at the wrong end of the track. You wonder if this will affect his performance today. Well, they only locked about a quarter of a mile getting to the start-finish line in that 125 mile qualifying races but didn't quite make it we have in car cameras out here including car number 11 jeff bodine getting set for the start he now appropriates the point for the start jeff bodine ken squire at cbs central to your i can't hi everybody out there watching uh it's a pretty nice view up here no one's at
Okay, good luck to you this afternoon, Jeff. 86 winner, now driving for Junior Johnson. Mark Martin in that Roush Ford, serious contender. He's been here five previous times in trouble finishing. He's ready to go. With that Arkansas handle on the steering wheel, you'll see that a bit later this afternoon. You're watching these pictures live. Here's car number 27 out and back, the Pontiac of Rusty Wallace. Wallace attempting to come up through the field, the Winston Cup champion, and win the race for the first time. Settling down for a start, 32nd annual 500. As 94,000 in the grandstand rise to send them off with a Daytona ovation. Let's listen. the 71 of the bottom. From the back of the field around Jimmy Means. It was expected that he'd maybe clip off eight or ten cars on this first lap. He has a lot of horsepower into that Chevrolet, but he'll have to drive carefully so as to not get in trouble. Out in front, it is Bodine from the point. Earnhardt lies second. They just moved that inside row up. I from can't... Mark Martin's picture, right in front of him is Phil Parsons, and down to his left is Walter. We've talked to Dale Earnhardt this morning. It had rained last night, and when we woke up this morning, it was still raining. This track is different from when they practiced late yesterday afternoon. It'll be interesting to see who has made the right chassis adjustments on their cars for this somewhat green racetrack. In the meantime, Ken Schrader has passed seven cars trying to get back to the front. Mark Martin. Watch that Arkansas handle when he comes down through. Look at them four wide in the back straightaway. This is live. It's the 32nd annual Daytona 500. Walter from the bottom of the racetrack. Dusting off three as he pulls himself into fifth position. Fades high, almost touches. Very close in the corners here. Normally, you don't see Darrell Walter that aggressive this early in the race, but he made a tremendous move around Jimmy Spencer. Chevrolet puts it in front of the second. Walter's out of the draft there. He's down low. He wants to get in line to stay with him. We'll see what happens. And for the fans uh, that might not know what drafting is, two cars running close together, nose to tail, can run faster than one car running by itself. And in Walter's case, where he's down on the inside, he doesn't have anyone in front of him. And he needs someone to come up closely behind him to get going again. Here's Ken Schrader. He's in car number 25. He's not having too much problem getting through. Going up underneath, Rusty Wallace. Robbie Moroso on the outside in the blue car just in front of him. Alan Kowicki in that group. Meanwhile, the leader, Earnhardt. Schrader is up to 31st position. That means he's passed 10 cars. From Darrell Walton's view. Pulls up behind Bobby Hillen and watch them live sliding through here. That's Mark Martin, number six on the outside. Inches apart at 190 miles an hour plus. This is what Darrell Waltrip needed was for another car to come out in the low groove so he could do some drafting. Bobby Hillen pulled out there, but now it looks like Walter wanted to go on the outside, but there wasn't room out there. Isn't there a rule about driving at least a car length back for every 10 miles an hour? Well, uh, not on the speedways, or at least they forget it when, when they buck Get up. a tailgating ticket. <laughs> about a tenth of an inch off Bobby Hillen's rear bumper. You saw Waltrip. Look at this magnificent shot from the blimp. That's the 42 pouring on. There's 83, Lake Speed's car right there with Darrell Waltrip in the 17. Well back there running side by side after those cars in single order. Back on the 31 degree banking up on the wall. But Darrell Waltrip is going backwards. He's losing positions down on the inside. He just simply cannot get any help in the drafting. As he did a year ago when he went on to win this race, he backed yep. up for the first 100 miles. Another driver not doing too well is Richard Penny. He started 11th, he backed the 17th. 
Here's one they're nervous about. Jimmy Spencer right in front of Waltrip in the 57. They call him Mr. Excitement. Spencer's trying to change his image, but he's one that gets physical everywhere. Now, here comes Schrader down to the bottom. The 21-year-old rookie, Moroso, youngest driver in the race, number 20 on the high side, and just in front of him is Larry Pearson in the 16 car. The 25, the white and green on the bottom. Here's Schrader, and he is ripping through this field. And he's catching up to some cars now that are very fast race cars. We saw Alan Kowicki in the car number seven directly in front of him. Those are good fast race cars, so he can draft with them and work on towards the front. And he could not linger. He had to go early here. He had to get up with that lead group. Let's go to Mike Jones. Ned's point early about the surface of the track is well taken. Oil and water and grease and rubber has gotten on this track all week from the racing, and the tires don't adhere. They slide along the surface of the racetrack. The rain last night washed all that off. The track is dry, and the rubber gets a good grip. You have to change the car's chassis and tire setup to compensate for that, or you may need this eraser later on. <laughs> Let's go down to Dave to Spain. Despite the rain last night, Mike, most of the top teams say they made only minor adjustments this morning to accommodate the rain. They've been fighting a slick track all week, and they think it'll be slick within, some say, 20, some say 50 laps, certainly for the second half of the race. The only team that made a lot of major changes this morning, Junior Johnson's outfit here. Junior wasn't happy with the horsepower after the bush flash, went back to Ingle Hollow and kept the folks in the hollow awake a couple of nights with the dynamometer running wide open. Came back down here, they blew two engines yesterday and had to change in an early morning thrash at five o'clock today let's get back to the action top side with ken squire here they are side by side that's ricky rudd in the yellow and white car that used to be bodine's car on the outside and the car that i'm really interested in now is davy allison who's come from uh, 16th up to what chris fifth he's up to sixth place now he's just taken another he's into fifth there he is Derek cope has come well up to run with him there in fifth place Derek Cope, a tremendous racer out of Spanaway, Washington. Here you see him, the red and white number 10, right behind the black car of Davey Allison. That Ford is humming. But it is a Chevrolet that leads the assemblage going down that long back straightaway. And over 194, 95 in there, Ned? Yes, in fact, they're, they're turning laps now in the low 190-mile-an-hour bracket, so they are running close to 197 or 88. And here's Ken Schrader and Richard Petty side by side and Terry Labonte just in front of the one car and they've caught Darrell Waltrip Terry Labonte in a new ride this year the Jackson Brothers Oldsmobile car number one right there Schrader's alongside of Waltrip their car was thrown by the same man and he flew it right off look at Petty run Richard Petty on the high side where he likes to run he likes to run high, but Ken, if the ra if it had not rained last night, Richard Petty would be closer to the front right now than he is. Why? If this track goes get slicker, he will be more of a force. He likes, he sets his car up for a hot, slick racetrack, and it'll get that way as we go on later on this afternoon. The sun is shining here, the temperature will go up, and with oil and water and grease is put down, the track will get slicker. He's fallen back to 22nd position from his starting slot. Dale Earnhardt leads in the Chevrolet, and three Fords follow. Jeff Bodine, Bill Elliott, and Mark Martin. Davy Allison in fifth, there's Pope six. Bobby Hill in seventh, Ricky Rudd is eighth. It is Jimmy Means in ninth, and Phil Parsons runs tenth in the great American race. Where's Waltrip? Back. Jesus, Waltrip has disappeared. Yeah, he and he and Richard Petty's cars are pushing right now. Yeah. They're too tight for this yeah. racetrack the way it is. You need to make that point. We okay. Yeah, I think Good. that's it. You know. Mm -hmm. yep. yeah. You okay? Okay. Thank you. Eight cars in the lead lap. Uh, in the uh, lead pack. Two, four. One, two, three, four. This is David Hobbs, Mike. Sounds like Professor Blatt. Wonderful. What? Can we stay right with the 25? That's where the story's going to be right now. Yeah. Give us the leader and come right back. Thank you very much. But just give us the leader and come back with him. Because... Great. Okay. Wow. Oh, look at that. That's a great shot. Uh, you can just see that the... Sh okay. Thank you. Yep. Uh, 
No, nothing, George. We're setting up our shot. Just you don't you can close his mic for now. I'll tell you. Live at Daytona, coming around to complete 12 laps on the two and a half mile track from Jeff Bodine's bumper view. You see that Bill Elliott has just pulled around Bodine. He has moved into that second spot. Earnhardt in the black car up in front. And Ken Schrader, who was on the pole in qualifying, then crashed a car in the 125 mile qualifying race, which was really a shakedown for him. But because he had to go to a second car, he was relegated to the rear of the field. If you have to change cars, you have to go out back. And here he is fighting his way beneath A.J. Foyt in car number 14, the Oldsmobile on the high side. And Schrader and Petty are now locked up as they continue to fight their way through the field. That's up into the 17th position. Petty has fallen the 22nd position. Now he's creeping back, and he's bringing Kenny Schrader with him. Pontiac and Chevy in your picture here. Third one. Bill Elliott asserting himself today. Looking very strong. New crew chief Mike Bean. Neil Earnhardt is slapping this racetrack in front at over 190 miles an hour. Last lap speed 190.1. That's a pretty quick pace for racing conditions. To Mike Joy. Ken Darrell Waltrip has dropped well back. He's running a second off the pace. What's the problem, Jeff Hammond? Mike, what happened was we had a little bit of a vibration right here at the start of the race. We were up there amongst all those guys. You can see they got a pretty good sized pack going on there. So I told him, Darrell, you better get out of there until we figure out what it is. You know, we didn't know if it was something in the drivetrain or if a tire going bad or what it was. So we just tried to get out of everybody's way. And when we did, we lost the draft a little bit. He said it felt like it went away. I don't know if we just had a tire a little bit out of the way or whatever. But uh, it's got. Trouble out here in the corner. Mike Alexander running slowly on the bottom of the racetrack. Field into the back straightaway. Car number 12 off the pace. That is the Allison car. There's some concern just before the race started, Ken, among the officials about the electrics here. It rained all night. The uh, caution lights here weren't working properly. They're afraid they may have to go to the old yellow flag method. We'll have to see uh, when the first occasion for a yellow comes. Here's Let's Mike Alexander issue, again. Let's see what the issue was here. Well, Mike Alexander down on the inside of Sterling Marlin in car number 94, and Alexander gets very loose. You can see the back end break loose, but that's tire smoke that we're seeing as Richard Petty and Kent Schrader go by on the outside, but he gets it back up on the banking, and he just told his crew after he got on the straightaway that everything was okay. Cost him a few positions and a few anxious moments. Now, as you watch that in slow motion, you have to remember that that was over 185 miles an hour, and he was able to control it. That's the big story. Running on the apron on a racetrack usually leads to massive incidents here. What about that tire that smoked like that, Ned? How bad is it? Well, it'll heat it up and could have some effect when he goes into the turn. He'll have to be careful for a few laps and not heat it anymore. Now, here's the situation. We're 16 laps in, and it looks, Ned, like a couple of cars set their machines too tight for the racetrack. Well, when they had their last practice yesterday afternoon, the track was very, very slick and had a lot of oil and grease and water on it. So in that case, you want to set the car up very tight. But it rained last night, washed all of that away. And uh, some of them, and I think Richard Petty would be one of them, that their car would be too tight. But as the tires heat up, then it'll come back in his favor. And here comes Schrader beneath Richard Petty. Ken Schrader in car number 25 is now taking over 13th as they slice their way through the field on the 31 degree east end of the speedway. Meanwhile, up in front, what a battle is beginning to develop among those leaders. 
the fight for first place has Earnhardt, Elliott, Bodine, Martin all mixing it up. This has been a remarkable race. Kenny Schrader starting the back, working his way up so beautifully. Darrell Walton, the defending champion, has fallen to 33rd place. He's 13 and a half seconds off the pace. One little vibration has done that to him. And Ken Schrader is actually gaining on Dale Earnhardt, who is leading this race and doing so by coming through the traffic. What a dramatic story of Schrader. Comes from the rear. And remember, there's a $212,800 bonus if Schrader in this 25 car can win. If you win the pole, and then they have a skins game that's uh, produced by the Unical folks, it's up to $212,000. Only one man won it last year. That was uh, Rusty Wallace in the second race of the year at Rockingham. So, so that's been accumulating. And into this year, that's the sum total now for which Jack Schrader has an extra incentive. Schrader's car looks like it's on rails, Ken. It's one of the better handling. There he is inside of Jimmy Spencer, going in low and edging by him. It's Phil Parsons on the right of the screen. And that is where he's going. And fellas, I believe that it was uh, maybe a good luck situation for Ken Schrader to have wrecked the car that he sat on the pole with because this is a better race car, in my opinion, for the race than the other car was. They massaged that other car so much to go fast forward and would run very fast, but there's a difference in running one lap and running for 500 miles, and I think this is a better race car for you. Dale Earnhardt stays in front. Elliott, the Ford, is right there in second, and let's join Dave Despain with a car owner of number three. Richard Childress, you have perhaps the most feared car in Daytona this week. He's at a very fast, early pace. Are you trying to wear these guys down? Now the car just seems to be working really good there and making the champion just yesterday. And we keep watching that 25 come up through there, so we're going to have our hands cut out for us when he gets up there. Everybody has the track is going to get very slick by the end of the day. Your car was loose on Thursday. Are you concerned you'll be too loose at the end of the race? No, we've got the car set and left enough of room to where we can still adjust to a slicker racetrack if we need to. Changing track conditions very much in the mind of this guy. He won with a loose race car Thursday. Well, national champion Rusty Wallace started 36. He's improved by 10 positions. He's up to 26 place, but all eyes are on Ken Schrader, who's now mingling with the leaders. Here he is, developing a yearning for yellow and white car number five, Ricky Rudd. And he chews that one up. Ken, we've been clocking Ken, uh, Dale Earnhardt out front there. He's running about 47 and 3 tenths seconds leading this race. Ken Schrader just ran the last lap at 46.8 tenths seconds, a half a second faster than the leader. In Dale traffic, in traffic. Up into the top five moves Schrader as he bombards and blasts his way through the field in the 32nd annual Daytona 500. Stay tuned. You got to stay right with Schrader. Please stay with Schrader. Bob, yeah, I'm here to do this. I'm talking to you now, Bob. You hear me? I want to do this cutaway piece, but if Schrader's about to take the lead, we better not. Uh... Yeah, all right. But I'm ready when you are, so we're all standing here. Schrader's fifth. <laughs> right. That's unreal. You know, that is. Question the... now is, can the car stand that? Yeah, I don't think it's, it's okay. bothering me. Oh, here he comes. Look at him come up on 10. Yeah. Ooh. That 10 has a hint. We got to stay right with him. Yeah. yeah. Yep. How far, how long away, folks? Diane? 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 Could you give me that Schrader Fifth. crew card? Take, taking over fourth. fourth. Going taking to fourth. over fourth right the now. Schrader crew card. Now he's going to fourth. Yes. He's got a little fight there. It's one of his yeah, own engines. So yeah. he's battling for fourth. Yeah. He is fourth at the moment. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yes, sir. Please. You get time to take, right. take a look at Wallace. Now he's in fourth. <clears throat> I 
Back with you live at Daytona. 53 of the 500 miles, about 22 laps knocked down. Taking a look at the standings here, and what a battle is being put on by car number 25. Schrader just keeps running through this thing like he's throwing strikes in a bowling alley. Here he is beneath the Ford of Bill Elliott. He is closing on the Junior Johnson number 11. Ned, I think this is one of the most dramatic runs I've ever witnessed at Daytona. I'll tell you, you could have gotten some awfully good bets this morning that he would not be able to come through the fact that he would even be in the top 10 at the end of 100 miles. And here, after just over 50 miles, he's up in the top five. Chris, you've been here a lot of years. You've been here since 59. You've seen them all. Have you ever seen anything like this? No, nothing. I just can't get over this. You know, Kenny's a new father. His nanny had a baby. He's going for the lead now. How about that on the inside? What a drive. This is phenomenal. Maybe needs a pair of new shoes is what Kenny Schrader said the other day. And he's got these roll of the dice here right now. He's from the back row to second place in 24 laps. And they say you can't pass with these restrictor plates on these cars? <laughs> I, I think he brought his own. Let's go to Dave Despain. The car owner, Rick Hendrick, just heard on the radio from Kenny Schrader these words. The car's great. The driver's scared. The team manager, Richard Groove, told me this morning you were going to go to the front conservatively. Is this your definition of conservative? Well, he, he's been Teddy. traffic. The car's working great. Teddy is in trouble. Spinning, sliding to the inside. Richard Petty's car number 43 running in 13th position. Caution is out on the track. First caution of the day. This is in the turns one and two area. Again, I believe he's stuck down in the grass. I don't think he can get the car to move him. Richard Petty, who had a brilliant ride in the 125-mile qualifier. Caution is coming out. It will show Schrader in second spot. Earnhardt in the lead. And they say a tire went down on car number 43. Richard Petty's crew... There's his crew. They have to be dejected. They were so high, so up for this event after the great performance all week, and particularly in the 125 when he fought his way to the lead. You know, he held it beautifully when he got into trouble. It shows the talent that man has. Look again. He was running behind Phil Parsons in car number four, going along fine, and all of a sudden, the back end just starts to go around. That tire That's leg away. speed going by on the outside as the tire went down. He holds it down on the inside pretty good for a little bit. Then he goes back up the high side of the racetrack. A lot of smoke coming from the car. He never hits the outside wall, though, and brings it back down on the inside. Aside from new tires, you ought to be able to get back in it. Yeah, if he can get the thing to going again. Here he goes. He's finally going now. The left rear tire is flat now. And it'll be a long journey back to the pits. Of course, he has lost at least one lap out there on the racetrack. Well, this is a break. Uh... 60-some miles uh, into the race. It's just time for a pit stop. This is a break for Darrell Waltrip. They've got to work on his car to get that vibration out of it. He may well be a contender. He has not fallen a lap down yet, so he could make it up. First 10 laps were run at an average speed of 188 miles per hour, way off the overall record for the restrictor plate of 199 miles per hour. And for a moment, let's just define these restrictor plates for folks that might have joined us for the first time. A couple of years ago, NASCAR mandated a smaller hole in the plate that sets on the bottom of the carburetor on top of the intake manifold to restrict the amount of fuel and air that can go into the engine to reduce the horsepower, which in turn reduces the speed of the cars. It's down to 50, 60. A year ago, it was a one-inch hole. They made it just a tickle smaller, and they say they keep running fast. They've got another 15 options. Here's Dave Despain. Kenny Schrader's crew must be very careful not to give up any of what their driver has earned them on the racetrack. They've gone to the right side for tires. They will quickly come back. They will They will go to the left. Let's go down pit road to Mike Joy. You see how far out from pit wall all these cars are parked. That's so they have room to do the four-tire change. Junior Johnson's crew done on the right, finishing up on the left. Ricky Rudd further up, maybe a little blocked in as they finish up his left tire change. Ooh, and he almost bumps the Don Levy car and finally squeezes out of there. Tight traffic on this road. Watching A.J. Foyt come out for a moment. Now you see Alan Kowicki's car number seven on pit road. Here is Schrader away right behind him, Terry Labonte and Rick Wilson. Lake Speed. It was a long stop for Schrader, far too long. But four tires under caution, and it looks like he feels that he has them that he has this field covered at the moment. Petty down and stopped. 
stuck in the grass. That left rear tire is flat now, and it just simply won't pull. The wrecker is going to have to push him in. That's a tough break. It is a tough break because the man, I think, had a legitimate shot at winning this race. He had dropped back some, but he had begun to come back towards the front, and uh, then the tire goes down. Right? Well, the, the, the question was, in, in, in a lot of the critics' minds, they, they thought he could go well for the first half. The issue at 52 years of age was going to be the second half, Ned. I don't think that would have been a big problem. Yeah. Don't. I don't, not on this racetrack. See, th there's only 200 laps in the 500-mile race here. If we were at Dover, Delaware, Rockingham, North Carolina, where you go 500 laps, then, yes, I'd say that it could be a problem. But I don't think at Daytona that that would have been a big problem for him. Look, look at the incident with uh, uh, Darrell Waltrip here coming out of the pits. This just happened a moment ago. Here he is coming up to speed, and look at that tire. Wow. Just gets by and rolled loose. There's hazards everywhere. What about this tremendous humidity today, Ned, on the drivers themselves? Well, certainly humidity is not uh, in the driver's favor, but most of them are in absolute tip-top condition, and they don't really pay a lot of attention to the, the atmospheric conditions. You know, it's amazing. You talk about condition, Ned. And 10 years ago, we used to see the drivers at Robinson's Bar having a big party the night before the 500. Now I see the drivers at 6 o'clock in the morning in their running clothes out on the beach, just staying in condition. No fun anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Different situation. That's what you think. We'll be back with more of CBS Sports live coverage of the Daytona 500 after this commercial and a word from your local station. He flat spotted everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he, uh, I think all the tires are flat. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, that's a shame. Be still out there. We want this shot. We come back for sure, and we need to reestablish the field. We, we have everybody still in the race? I guess so. Yeah. Did Spencer not stop, or did he just take on fuel, maybe? Or two tires. Showing 30 complete this time by. Does anyone know, did Spencer not stop? How many in the lead lap, please? Every car has pitted. Yeah, every car. Okay, thanks. All right. Okay, uh, all right, one of them parked, did it not? Didn't one of them come in and park? Okay. What, what about they're, our computer? They're both back but I need the, the petty right story, and we need to know yeah. where Schrader is in this knockout, and yeah. how many cars in the lead lap? Does anybody have that over in score? Well, I think they all are. Two. Two, two are down. We have 40 cars in the lap. Yeah. <laughs> Unbelievable. Amazing. Thank you. He'll get back in this, I'm sure. And Anything else, Bob? Spencer's leading. There's the bar. Hi. Hi, right, Bob Stennett. Bob Stennett. Yeah. yeah. Why don't you do the leaderboard after? Because it's so changed. We can Okay. Here at the Daytona International Speedway, we have a new look leaderboard after this caution period. Jimmy Spencer now appropriates first, Earnhardt second, the Elliott Ford into third, Sterling Marlin, Neil Bonnet, Bobby Hillen. Rounding out those men up in front, we have 40 cars in the lead lap as uh, we have completed 20, what, nine going for 30 laps now. Jimmy Spencer is out front because he changed only two tires in the pits and got out quickly. How much of a handicap will that be when the green comes out, Ned, with all those drivers behind him with four fresh ones on? Could make a difference because four tires certainly are worth more than just two tires. Let's join David Hobbs, who is in the infield area with Linda Petty. You're right, Ken. Here I'm in the garage with Linda Petty. And as usual, you're not watching the race in the pits, but now you're the car owner. Shouldn't you really have been there in the pits watching? I don't think so. I'm, I'm back here with the family, and we're just listening and keeping our fingers crossed and wishing for about that much luck today. And 
Looks like we didn't get too much good luck, but, you know, it's not over. It's just starting. Maybe we can get some new tires on it, and we'll be off and rolling. Well, you guys in the commentary booth can see the car. Are they pushing it back? Is she going to get her car back in the race again? They're going to uh, put more tires on the hook, well, David. I can't see from here, but they say that they're bringing him in and they're bringing him to pit road, which means if they're bringing him to pit road, they must be going to put tires on it and, um, you know, try to get it going. Well, I hear they're bringing it into pit road now, so he'll be back out in the race, but he must have lost at least two laps by now. Do you think he can make that back? You're looking for more yellows? In this race, anything can happen. The guys that are out front right now might not be there at the end, and the guys that behind are behind might be up front. Well, a disappointed car owner and wife, Linda Petty, but knowing that Richard Petty run here at Daytona, anything could happen, and we'll see what does happen back from up there in the booth of you guys. You know, I remember a few years, well, maybe more than a few years ago, that Richard Petty was eight laps down at Dover, Delaware, and came back to win the race. At Nashville, Tennessee, one race I was many years ago, he was 13 laps off the pace and wound up winner. And didn't he, in his first race here in 1964, just have a tremendous race, win by a lap? It was one of the biggest wins in Daytona, the only big win, I think, where somebody won by a grand margin. Well, Richard Petty's luck of recent, since he won the Firecracker 400, and his 200th career win on this very track back in 1984 has not been uh, very, very good. Let's go to Dave Despain. We're in Kenny Schrader's pit where team manager Richard Room was explaining about the conservative approach that took them from uh, 42nd to the lead in 24 laps. And now you're back in 15th. What happened on the pit stop? Well, we had a lug nut to hang on the left front wheel and uh, my tire changer, he was just having problems getting it off. and. Uh, we just got fouled up there on that deal. We just have to come back to the front again. The car's running great. How many times can you pass this whole field today in order to win this race? Uh, well, I hope just as many as it takes. <laughs> Good luck today. So far, they're undefeated. He's a man who first made himself known, Richard Room, on the water. He built great drag boats, race boats, and uh, Rick Hendrick brought him into this program. I guess he's got it all figured out. If you can run them on the water, you can run them on the asphalt. Well, my question here is how much of that kind of running can an engine stand, you know, just all out, constantly on it, with very little, if any, breathing? Well, with that restrictor, what about it? Well, it can stand much more uh, than that. It's not nearly as hard on as it used to be as the green flag rolls again. Back to green and lap 31, with Spencer leading, Earnhardt second, Elliott third, Marlon fourth, Bonnet fifth. Bobby Hill in sixth, Jeff Bodine in seventh, Mark Hunt in eighth, A.J. Floyd in ninth, Derek Cole in Parsons showing 11th on this start. And for the fans wondering about Richard Petty's car, they took it back behind the wall, Ken. They are working on it, and hopefully they'll get it back in as Earnhardt goes for the lead. Battle for the lead. Down to the bottom of the racetrack comes car number three, and the Chevrolet of Earnhardt moves around. Car number 57, the Pontiac of Jimmy Spencer. Dave Despain. Trader's team is not concerned about wear and tear on the engine. They feel the reason they've been able to get to the front so handily is the handling of the race car. They feel they're not having to work the power plant that hard. They don't want to have to come from the back all day long. But if they have to, they think that motor could uh, could last with no problem, Chris. But keep in mind, crew chiefs always talk like that. But, fellas, now that with the restrictor plates, they're only turning these engines about 75 to 7,600 RPMs. When they don't run restrictor plates, they turn them about 82 or 8,300 RPMs, and that's why it's so much harder on them to run in the high RPMs. Now, here are the positions as they came to caution and on the restart after that pit stop. Bernhardt fell just a spot. Schrader was the big loser all the way back to 15th there as they continue to sort themselves out in scary manner up there in the banking. Bodine giving us this view as Bobby Hillen dives down on the inside. They almost touch here. And here's Darren Waltrip looking a lot better now than he did before the yellow. Waltrip on the left of his car. I was thinking that was Bobby Hillen's car down in there. Let's take a look as they come back into the corner. Right in front is Jimmy Spencer. Get a sense of that 31 degree banking. It really throws you up. You really carry a G load down in there, Ned. Yes, you do. And I think the point that 25, 20 made a big difference in back since the green flag came out. And I think the, the fact that they did only put on two tires on that car has hurt it. Here's car number five, Ricky Rudd. Right up there with Phil Parsons field out of turn four. Jeff Bodine at the controls. Junior 
Trader Johnson car. Trader right there beside him. Trader's car doesn't seem to be as uh, superior since the pit stop as it did before the pit stop. Well, he's coming back know. to eighth, fifteenth. Yeah. yeah, he's passing the best cars on the track. So Here he is. He's up under a Neil Bonnet. That would move him another couple of spots. He's headed for seven. He's pulling along with car number eight, Bobby Hillen. I wonder how many of the other cars uh, Schrader's gone in front of them. Well, he's up to what? Fifth, sixth? Here he is, working on Ricky Rudd. Rudd currently running in the ninth position. I beg your pardon. Here's the 25 car behind Parsons. That's my green and the white cars mixed up there. Here's Petty's car being worked on back in the garage area. Of course, with all that mud and grass under there, they have a little bit more to do to it than just put four tires on it. They've got to check everything out to be sure that everything is safe. Earnhardt first, Elliott second. Amazing they've run this far. 40 cars still in the lead lap. Here's the number 11 car down to the bottom. And sneak his way up through comes the Jeff Bodine machine. Let's see if we can find out what's going on with Richard Petty's car. Phil Parsons slowing down pretty dramatically out there. Looked like he might be coming in. Let's go to David Hawks. Well, Ken, the big problem with Richard Petty's car is that when all four tires went down, it dropped onto the exhaust pipe. They're having a heck of a job trying to straighten that out. They keep jamming rods down it and opening it up, but it's very, very flat under the car, and they had a tremendous job getting the jack under it. That's all four tires changed. They've done a few bits and pieces. The bodywork generally is very good, but underneath, this car has taken a bit of a pounding on the pavement. Out on the track, leader Dale Earnhardt is coming up on the movie cars, and there he go. He's in the film, Days of Thunder. <laughs> they pitted for a while. They were in for... Uh, several laps and came back out. Yeah. Well, you hope to get their pictures in a hurry because he went by pretty quickly. <laughs> They're just running 100 miles and they are not being scored. Two machines out here for that motion picture. Ken, you mentioned Phil Parsons going into the pits there just a moment ago. He had a change of right side tires. He's going back out, but he's going a lap down to the field. Tough break for Phil Parsons. He was in for about 26 seconds. Schrader in the 25 car is now to six. Around Derek Cope. There's Mark Martin in the six and Sterling Martin in the blue car, number 94 on the outside. Bill yep. continues to be earning Martin. Bill Elliott has been sort of quiet down here during speed weeks this year, but uh, now Ken Schrader passes another car, but uh, Elliott's car running very strong, staying right there with Earnhardt. So a lot of people feel that he will be a factor in this race, and certainly has shown so far that he has some muscle in his sport. Two-time winner of the event, Elliott from the nine, and look at Schrader in the green and white, car number 25. Continuing to slip up through here, try to run him down. To third, from 15th, comes Schrader. Four new tires on the car. Mark Martin staying in there in the number six. Sterling Marlin now fifth. Derek Coke back there in six. Jimmy Spencer in seven. Jeff Bodine is eight. Here's Petty coming back on several laps down. Get an idea of how quick those leaders are running. And look at Schrader just close up that interval. Well, that car is strong. 190.2 in the last lap. That's exactly the speed that Earnhardt was running before the car came out. For the lead, Elliott goes to the bottom, attempting to go out in front for the first time in the 500. It has been Earnhardt leading, Schrader fighting his way all the way from dead last to take the lead. Caution, he's fallen back to 15th, fought his way in that green and white number 25 car, back to third. Dale Inman, crew chief for Petty, is standing by with David Hobbs. Dale, how's the car look underneath? Well, it don't seem to be that much damage. You know, they, they've been at the spoiler and everything on the rear brain and the front air dam seems to be the big problem. We're not going to run real fast before we're a bunch of laps down. But he said he had a right rear tire going down just as he went in the corner and it just got away from him. After such a good run on Thursday, you're pretty disappointed. After such a good run on Thursday, was it a real big disappointment to have a simple thing like that put you out? Well, we was having a good run today. Just uh, we cut a tire down. That can't be helped. Thanks, Dale. 
falling back dramatically goes Elliott. He was running side by side with car number three, Earnhardt, and now he finds himself back in fourth or fifth. Well, he just simply got down there on the inside. Nobody would go with him and uh, drop him back. More from Daytona shortly. Might come in a little bit further on that Elliott situation when mm -hmm. we come back. Uh -huh. You know, we know who we've not seen at all or had on camera is uh, Rusty Wallace yet. <laughs> yeah, he's back in 12th place now. Yeah, he's national champion. Yeah. Thank you. Now, when, after that, we need to uh, get another lap time Oop. on Earnhardt. Oops. Wiki. Uh, and Mike Alexander. Which one? At the Daytona International Speedway, we've just had a major incident down here in turn one involving four cars. It looked like Phil Parsons' number four got loose. The Mike Alexander number 12 have been collected. So has Alan Kowicki's car number seven been involved. And Robbie Moroso, the rookie's number 20, that's his second car this week. He had one wiped out in turn two when a car was losing oil in front of him to practice the other day. Well, here we can see the car number four of Phil Parsons already sideways. Alan Kowicki down the inside and Rob Moroso right in the middle. And Mike Alexander, the car coming up behind there, the red car number 12, as they spin out into the grass. A lot of water. damage done to the three cars on the left, the 20 car, the 12 car, and the four car. Now, Alan Kowicki doesn't seem to have too much damage to the car number seven on the right. In fact, he gets uh, away. He, he from got the going. He's back uh, on the way to the pitch now. Here's Mike Joy. Steve Bird is trying to find out where his race car is, what kind of shape it's in. First off, is Rob okay? Yeah, Rob's fine. Uh, I guess, I don't know, something happened down there. Somebody wasn't driving too smart, I'll tell you that. Sorry. <laughs> but he's okay. Can he get back around? He's fine. We're just stuck in the mud right now. We're trying to get out, uh, waiting for a tow truck to pull him out. We're just stuck in the mud, and we'll get it back in and see how bad it is. The defending Bush Grand National Champion is the youngest driver in this field. And it appears that the rain last night didn't so much affect the racetrack as this infield grass. Here's Dave Spain. With Alan Kowicki's team crew chief Paul Andrews on the radio. Heard the words, we got hit. I don't know how bad it is. They'll find out momentarily as Kowicki comes wheeling down pit road. The leaders are in. Dale Earnhardt is in the uh, far end of the pit road. Also pitting Bill Elliott. Here comes Jimmy Spencer in the six of Mark Martin has gotten his fuel and moved back out and still those line of Colwicky and it is wholesale pit stops here and Allen may be stuck out there in traffic. Colwicky just ambling down toward the pits now as they came to the caution flag Richard Petty made up a lap. He moved around the leaders and shot down by to take one back. He just got another lap back by not stopping at the pit this time. So he's picking up two laps that he's lost during this caution flag period. We'll check the number of laps he's down in just a moment after 
that incident involving Richard in turn two. Here's Alan Kowicki, number seven, pitting A.J. Foyt alongside there. Kowicki's car dented some in the back. Here's Dave. Just a year ago, Alan Kowicki might well have won this race, but for a late flat tire. Now his left front tire is flat. They'll change the right side rubber. He's been tagged in the rear. That does not appear to be substantial damage. The nose of the car is also scuffed and skinned, but not badly beat up. It will be a slower race car than he started this race with, but it appears to be a car that can still go out and run the remainder of the 500 miles. Ken Squire. Talk about the uh, pit crew work. Dale Earnhardt just came in and got out 24.7 seconds to got four tires. Where Ken Schrader also got four tires for 31.7 seconds. That's six seconds longer Schrader's crew took than Earnhardt's crew. Under caution, second time today in the Daytona 500. As Earnhardt continues to be the dominating factor up in front, and Ken Schrader is the dominating factor through the rest of the field. He's come from the rear once and from 15th second time to challenge out here in car number 25 and now we see Kowicki's car going back behind the wall for additional work. Well, that was a little surprising. I thought that he was ready to go back out on the racetrack but uh, the car was not the engine was not running on the car so they you can see they pulled the hood up on it now so they're looking underneath there. Let's go to Mike Joy. Richard Petty made up those laps but he's back in the pits. That string on the left side of the car checks the wheelbase but the front air dam has gotten some bad damage in either the previous or the most recent incident. So they'll take a little time checking out the alignment of the car so Richard can go the full 500 miles. Not much they can do about that air dam. That'll hurt him aerodynamically as he tries to push this Pontiac through the wind. So if Richard made up two, perhaps he'll be at the tail end of this lap when he goes back out. But they're setting this car up right now and taking their time because under caution, he's at the back of the line anyway, and they want to go the full distance, the 500 miles. With 110 miles in the race, are 35 cars on the lead lap, so it's still pretty competitive. Dave Despain. Alan Kowicki has torn loose an oil line under the car, and that's what the crew has gone to work on. As they tried to refire the car, no oil pressure, and the reason is back under here. An oil line jerked loose in that infield skid. They're going to have to fix that before they can get Kowicki back into the fray. Kowicki bails out of the car. He is, of course, his own owner and does a lot of his own work on the automobile, and Kowicki has climbed out of the car now to try to help with the repair process that looks like it's going to take a while because they're going to have to completely rebuild that oil line for Alan Kowicki's car. Alan Kowicki being interviewed here as we check in to find out what happened out there. We get back out, but that pretty much, you know, is going to ruin our chances today. Alan, how did it start? What happened to you? One car ran into another one. I'm not sure which one. If it's like Bill Parsons and Rob Moroso or something like that, just. Somebody made a move and somebody else running in the back end of them just sent a whole bunch of cars spinning. I had nowhere to go. Can this thing be fixed? Can you get back out there? We'll be back, but, you know, this pretty much hurts our chances for the day. Alan Kowicki, let's go to my joy. Dave Despain, I'm holding the business end of a racing helmet and one of the biggest innovations in recent years from the Simpson folks. This is the old styrofoam inner liner of the helmet, and you can see here when you push in on it, you can make a pretty good dent with your head if you hit something. Simpson spent the whole year developing this new style of foam liner, which when you push it in has a substantial memory. It comes right back. And in Snell Foundation testing, 20% better protection against the first impact, 40% better protection against the secondary impact. This is probably the greatest innovation in driver safety since Bell invented the full face helmet back in the 60s. Davey Allison is just leaving the pits after a lengthy stay in car number 28. Yeah, and they had the hood up on the car, Ken. He was in there for quite a while. I don't know if the car's overheating or what the situation is, but Davey, back on the track, he still is in the lead lap. Better than 14 seconds under the hood there. What's wrong with the engine? We don't know, but he didn't lose a lap. Let's take a look at the Budweiser leaderboard here in the Daytona 500, our live coverage of the 32nd annual $2 million race. This was after 110 miles. We saw Earnhardt then leading, and Schrader had come back to second spot. Martin Cope Elliott rounding out the top five. In the second five was Jeff Bodine's Ford, followed by Ricky Rudd, Sterling Marlin, Jimmy Spencer, and Davey Allison at that time was hanging in well. The two movie cars have been withdrawn as of lap 41. Tommy Ellis and Bobby Hamilton. 
hovering overhead today is the Goodyear Blimp Enterprise. At the controls, Captain Drew Marshall from Pompano Beach, Florida. 11th consecutive year the Goodyear Blimp has covered the Daytona 500. You know, one of the drivers doing extremely well today is Jimmy Spencer. Uh, he was wearing that new look. Jimmy, uh, Mr. Excitement, has a uh, toupee out of here he's talking about. Dave Despain, what's going on down there? Well, following up on Mike Joy's report about helmet safety, the drivers have another new, new addition from the Simpson Helmet uh, Sim Simpson Safety Equipment Company this year, and it's this protective belt, the harnesses that hold the drivers in the car. In the past, none of this apparatus was here. It's all been added. It's a buckle across the chest and a pad here. And that does two things. The pad protects you from impact into the sternum, and being buckled in like that keeps internal organs from moving around in case of impact. And by being strapped across this way, it keeps the belts from separating in case of impact. That allows the driver to move from side to side. Now they're strapped in tight. The less movement, the less chance of injury can thank Neil Bonnet for that new improvement after he broke his sternum in a crash that separated his middle. We'll be back with more of the Daytona 500 live on CBS in a moment. Can somebody hand me tissues a couple of tissues a couple of tissues oh thank you thank you got it thank you sure gonna get five points what are they doing that's down a lot of water up on the track on the track yeah, yeah. Somebody talk to Robert Yates and update us on, on Davey. Yeah, we need to do that. Please. Auto racing skid row again, like where we did that piece last year. That's right. Mark. Calamity Corner here yeah. yesterday. Under caution for the second time today, the 32nd 500. Let's go to Mike Joy. You're looking under the hood of Davy Allison's car. Robert Yates and the team are checking the tow out. There's a mark on the left front corner of the bumper when Davy slid in for his first pit stop about lap 26, and he caught the tire up against the pit wall. Now that bent a tie rod and changed the tow in. He's gone out, run a few laps. It isn't quite right. Fortunately, they have this caution to make adjustments and reset it. Here's David Hobbs. Well, I'm with Clyde Booth, who's Rob Morozo's team manager, and he's flailing around the car. Are you going to try and get back in the track? Well, yeah, we are right now. We've got a rear end housing bent, and we've got some pieces up in the uh, front here that are bent, but I don't think it's as serious. We're after the uh, rookie of the year, so we've got to do whatever we can do to get out there, and I think we'll... How many laps down will you let yourself go? What was that? How many laps down will you let yourself go before you gave it up? Well... You know, even if we got down 40, 50 laps, we we're going to go out and give it all we can because it's a real long season and, you know, all the laps count. Okay, well, good luck, Clyde. And back to Dave Despain. And we're with Richard Broom. Great quotes abound in the Kenny Schrader pit today. The latest from Schrader on the radio. We can go racing now. The first question is, what's he been doing up until now? And the second question is, Richard, <laughs> what did he mean? Well, he, uh, we put him four, four springs, four shocks on the car this morning and a little bit more spoiler, just trying to get him comfortable with it. And uh, 
You know, we're just trying to work our way back to the front. He's got his confidence in the car. He's got a little push in it. And now he says he can go racing. So uh, we're going to loosen him up a little bit. Is this car getting better as you go? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I think so. I think I think it's coming to us. I think that's real bad news for the rest of this field. Let's go to Mike Joy. <laughs> Robert Yates is the team owner for Davey Allison. Is that car back on straight now? Yeah, what happened? We came in the fence. Uh, the rear brakes locked up on it. And he hit the pit wall. And it moved us. You know, moved it enough to move the steering wheel. And so we're just resetting the toe and, you know, he pulled the steering wheel off and moved it one spoke. So probably just got it knocked a little bit sideways. Okay, here's a guy who's had a busy month. Their dyno blew up three weeks ago, put two feet of oil and water in their engine room, and almost burned down the whole building. They ordered new parts, did a lot of research and testing. They're ready to run and win this thing. Richard Petty making a fleet stop on pit row, just gets in there quickly. Gets on the tail end of that lead lap. 35 cars still in the lead lap. Here are the standings up in front. Jack Pennington, a rookie after this caution, is in first. Mark Martins, Ford in second. Derek Cope is maintaining third. Jeff Bodine's Ford is fourth. And Rick Wilson in car number 75 lies in fifth, followed by Brett Bodine, the new driver for the Kenny Bernstein team. Sterling Marlin, Ernie Irvin, Earnhardt, and Elliott round out the top ten. Here's David Hawks. Well, a quick spin and a quick trip to the medical unit. You okay? I'm fine, David. Thank you. What happened to the car? Well, I, I was trying to pass AJ on the inside, and I guess uh, the car behind us, uh, that my spotter told me that Moroso flipped me and turned me in the wall. I really hated the guys that worked all winter long to, to build a good car. The car was flying. We had equalized tires, so we were just going to try to get back in position, wait for another caution flag, try to get her lap back, and try to win the race. But uh, I guess it's not to me. I'd just like to thank Kodak and Delco Remy and this whole Morgan McClure team. They, they had a fine product here today, and that's a shame it's out. Well, you completely out of the race. What about Richmond next week? Got a car for that? Oh, yeah, we've got another car. we got several other cars, but it won't help us any today. Well, another guy, a very disappointed driver out of there, Super Bowl of Racing, Bill Parsons. Back to you, Ken. Jack Pennington and only his third Winston Cup start, that white and black automobile. How about, how about that, Ken? Shooting for Rookie of the Year honors is a $25,000 prize at the end of the year. $1,000 a race. Stipend if he makes Rookie of the Year honors at the end of the season. Here's the second place car. That's number six, Mark Martin. Maintaining third, Derek Cope from Spanaway, Washington. Jack Pennington out in front, who's run a lot of dirt. Somerville, South Carolina, Augusta, Georgia, Dublin, North Carolina. Rookie is beaten back by the front two automobiles. Mark Martin, Derek Cope, first and second. Ken, every driver in this field has aspirations of winning the Winston Cup championship this year, and they want to get as many points as they possibly can. If they lead a lap in any of the races this year, they get five bonus points. And now Mark Martin, as he crosses the start-finish line, has picked up the five bonus points. Jack Pennington got them. A little while back, we saw Elliott run up there and make a run at Dale Earnhardt. He went up there and got five points and then dropped back. Earnhardt had started in seventh. You can see him, and from the face cam, there's the Arkansas handle on the steering wheel. And, you know, he, he dressed a little bit differently from a lot of race drivers. It looks like he puts more emphasis on his right hand as he goes into the turns. We'll watch him now as he goes down the back stretch into turn three. Now, he pulls a little bit on his left, but look how he positions that right hand. He really uses the right hand. Most race drivers do more pulling with their left hand than pushing with their right hand. He'd get low marks from a driving instructor in our high school. That's right. Driver training, that would be a C minus at least, but it's good enough for about 190, 95 miles an hour for Mark Martin leading the great American race. That's the guy that uh, Clyde Bolton wrote about. Mark Martin. Mark and when he walks out to the car, he looks like Eddie R. Carroll. When he gets in, he looks like King Kong. <laughs> Here he is up front, number six, Mark Martin. Roush Ford won one race last year. They had some bitter disappointments, including one here at Daytona, which they thought they had the race bagged. And then, all of a sudden, ran out of the fuel with just a few moments to go. Ken, as we see Mark Martin, the dashboard on his car and the instruments on it, let's take a look at what they are. On the right side is the fuel pressure gauge and then we have the oil temperature gauge and then the oil pressure gauge and the tachometer right directly in front of them, the rpms of the engine and then over here is the water temperature gauge so mark martin taking a look at all of those as he goes down the straightaway and glances in instrument no speedometer well you know we're gonna the race itself ken schrader's back in 17th place so we'll see some more passing before the next commercial Someone wants to set it up. Great. If you got time to look for the speedometer, you're not going fast. 
fast enough. <laughs> That's right. Derek Cope, number 10. Earnhardt's number three. Slicing down along the inside. That comes up to second for Cope. Earnhardt the third. Derek Cope using Hendrick Motorsports engines this year in his Chevrolet. And he's running very, very strong. And he's running right over the leader, number six, Mark Martin, as they come back to the stripe. 54 yeah. laps complete. It's interesting. Well, Cope has been in so many races and struggled. Then when he got an engine, he started to really go. So all he needed was an engine. Let's go to uh, David Hobbs and Rob Barroso. Rob, I just spoke to Phil Parsons, and he seemed to think that you touched him from the back. Well, I believe I did. We were running side by side, and he got a little ahead of me, and he wanted to come in. He started coming up when my car wasn't out of the way. I let off the gas. Going that fast, you can't get on the brakes or anything. I, I wanted to leave enough room for him, but the draft just kept me there, and we just got together. You know, I think he came over a little bit soon, and I couldn't get back fast enough. And it's a shame it happened. The Crown Olds was running real well. No, just a racing accident as far as you're concerned. And Excuse me? Just a racing accident as far as you're concerned. Oh, I certainly didn't want to wreck my car on purpose. Well, Clyde's in there trying to make sure you get back in the race. You think you've got a chance? I think we might have a chance to get it back together. Those guys working on it are a great bunch of guys. If anybody can get it back together, they can. Well, well we've got to keep a meeting like this in the pits after these crashes. Let's go down to Mike Joy. One reason Mark Martin is up at the front is because Jack Roush, his car owner, likes to play the percentages. The tires on Martin's car had only 26 laps on them when this caution flag came out, so he said, leave them on, we'll get fresh ones next time. They just gave him fuel. That put him up to the front of the pack on the restart. He wasn't the only one thinking that way. Here's Dave Despain. Buddy Parrott is a veteran crew chief, saw the situation exactly the same way, called the shot exactly the same. He said, our right tight tires are fine, and we want to be in the thick of that lead draft. He gave Derek Cope a, a dose of gas and sent him back out there, and Cope drove his car right into the lead. Unfortunately, Buddy didn't have anything to solve the uh, problem of that black number three that has since passed his man. But Cope is strong here today with Buddy calling the shots. Matt calling the shots once again is in that white and green number 25. Schrader racing Lake Speed in the 83. They're still slicing back through the field. This car, number 25, has made it all the way to the top twice in the rear. Currently is 14th and closing up on Terry Labonte. You know, Chris, I don't believe that car is coming back up through the pack quite as good as he did a little bit earlier. He's having trouble, that's again Schrader car number 25, having trouble now getting around late speed. I'm sure that a lot of the others have made adjustments on their cars during these pit stops, and certainly that has helped them to, to maintain better speeds than they were running earlier. I think Speed's car and Slash pit stop at the register again right there. And there's Schrader cutting down low on the track. Obviously trouble here for the driver who qualified on the pole and started the back row, heading for the pits now. Hopefully the trouble is not terminal. A well, tough break for, Sh for Schrader in the Lumina. Looked like there might have been a little smoke from the car, Chris, and certainly this would be an unscheduled pit stop for Ken Schrader. Boy, what a run he has had here today. And now all of a sudden headed to the pits, Dale Earnhardt continues to lead this race as Schrader down on the inside. It looks like just coasting to the pits. Of course, his crew will be there ready for him when he comes in as we watch that big pack of cars up front. We mentioned we mentioned earlier today about Schrader's emotions, all the trouble he's had here going from the front to the back, wrecking in Thursday's race. Now here, the big disappointment in the 500. Well, he's running in a very thick pass bunch of cars there right now. That's Michael Walter right directly behind him. As we watch Schrader now coming on into the pits, he finally has made it to his pit area. We'll see if it's something that they will be able to repair. I'm sure that he's had conversation with the crew on the radio. And he's going behind the wall. Let's go to the pits and Dave Despain. The clock has struck midnight on the Cinderella story, but perhaps only temporarily. They will go under the hood and try to determine what has happened here and whether or not the damage is terminal. Richard Broom goes to talk with his driver while the crew, for the moment, look, shake their hands, and try to determine what happened. Cheech Gardy, any idea what's happened here? Motor. Blown? Yeah. Terminal? Yeah. Nobody's hurrying to do anything here. I got a feeling this one is all done. Kenny Schrader is climbing out of his car, and it looks like it's all over for the man who sat on the pole here today and drove so magnificently through the first two rounds of green flag racing. Schrader taking off the helmet. Kenny, what happened? I guess something in the, something in the engine let go. I mean, it was it was working good, you know. It just uh, 
something finally gave up, and that don't happen to the Hendricks team very often. It just happened here. Chris Economaki speculated that two charges to the front might be taking a lot out of the motor. Did you feel you were using up your car driving that hard? Nah, you ain't using the motor or any harder here. Run the back of that deal or run to the front. Talk to me, if you can, about the frustration. What's happened to you over the last two years here? Ain't been no real bad week, though. I mean, we still, you know, we got we got the pole, we got the clash. We run good in the 25s, and I think we could have done good today. I think so, too, and I think that one of these years he will come down here and complete the package, but again this year, Kenny Schrader has come up short at Daytona International Speedway. And the $212,000 bonus for winning the pole in the 500 moves to Richmond, Virginia next week and becomes $220,000. Here's a late sports development. It is being reported from Associated Press that Buster Douglas's manager has now struck a deal for a fight with Evander Holyfield heavyweight championship in September. And that means that Tyson will have to wait. Again, it's going to happen. There will be a heavyweight fight. It will be Buster Douglas, the guy with a long reach, and Evander Holyfield out of Atlanta, Georgia, going in September for the heavyweight fight. We'll try to get some more information about that as the day continues. Well, he's a fellow that has really come into notoriety in the sports world here of recent, and we got some fellows out here today that's coming into notoriety. Derek Cope running right up front, running in second place there with Dale Earnhardt. Now, Dale Earnhardt is no stranger to the front, but Derek Cope, well, he hasn't run up front that much, but he might be a force to be reckoned with not only here today, but all season long. Two of the major factors, Richard Petty right here, in and again out of the pitch, obviously not a good chance to win. Kenny Schrader out of it before we get to 175 miles, and the attrition is starting to take its toll. As Ned Jarrett was pointing out, that is a Hendrick engine that is in that car running in second place. Here's Earnhardt's look in the last 10 years of Daytona 500-mile competition. Come close, been up that top five time after time, but it's always eluded him at the finish. He came the closest in 86, looked like it was his, and then for a thimble full of fuel, he would have traded his kingdom. Jeff Bodine came home victorious. As they say, close, but no cigar. The Alonso Wookiee's back in the race after 19 minutes and 45 seconds in the pit. He's 19 laps down, but he persists. Jeff Bodine, picture from car number 11, maintaining fourth position in the 500. And we see Mark Martin directly in front of him, a pair of Fords running together. 63 laps are complete. There has been very little interval on those front cars today, Chris. They've been bundled up from the outset. A lot of the contenders remaining in the lead lap. There's 200 laps in this race, and you say 63 have been run. Dale Earnhardt leads, Derek Cope is second, Mark Martin third, Jeff Bodine fourth, and Rick Wilson next in line. From Mark Martin's bumper cam, here he is looking back at that car number 11 who's just sneaking a peek at him. See Bodine in that number 11, that Junior Johnson car. This number 11 car won the second 125-mile qualifying. And let me tell you, folks, they qualify the front row eight days before the race, the front row only, and then they decide the rest of the field for the 125-mile qualifiers this past Thursday. And in, in those races, this number 11 went nonstop, not having to take on fuel. They have, what, 21 gallons of fuel on board. 22. 22, and that particular run is considered an economy run in stock car racing that took Bodine to victory when a lot of other cars ran out of fuel. Yeah, with that, the restrictor place, they can only go about 100 miles. You know, the, that in-car camera of Bodine showing where he sits, there was an interesting shot to see how close to the steering wheel that he prefers to sit. You know, do you ever sit that close to that, or would you like to be further back? You can see he's right up there. Let's look at Mark Martin now sitting in his car. There's, see, he's way back. His arms are almost outstretched. It's a personal taste. He, <laughs> as, his net, as Ken calls it, that Arkansas grip. There he's crisscrossing his arms. That's got to be a tiring way to drive. He'll sleep tonight uh, when this race is over. Phil Barkdahl just bringing his car in. Yeah. Notice Martin doesn't have his goggles on. He's driving without his goggles. Fellas. 
But let's notice this wire here. You wonder, has he got an electronic steering wheel? No, that's to the radio, the two-way radio, and all he has to do is push a button up here. When he wants to talk to his crew members, he pushes that button, and of course, uh, they can talk to him anytime they want to. Can he ask for a or AM? Or? <laughs> no, no, right. That's all mono. We've got a top 40 station there now. <laughs> Third, Rick Wilson now fourth, Mark Martin fifth, Bill Elliott sixth, Jimmy Spencer seventh, and Ricky Redneck. Earnhardt bearing down, trying to win this 500 for the first time, and he's looking strong, but Elliott just as strong at the present time here at the 500. I don't have a tie on. Do I need to put one on? No, you look fine. No. Oh, just a minute or so. Okay. What the show me? Yeah, that's what I need. The interval from three to ten. No, 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 no. Yeah, just slide back. Show me the interval. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Sixty nine laps. Sixty nine of two hundred laps complete. Dale Earnhardt continues out in front. And then it's a choo-choo train behind. Approximately 10 cars in there. Here you see the leader, number three, going in second. Is Eric Cope, Dine is third, Wilson fourth, Jimmy Spencer sixth, Mark Martin seventh, Ricky Rudd in the eighth position, while ninth is uh, Terry Labonte and tenth is Michael Waltrip. Earnest lead of over one second is the biggest lead anyone has amassed during the course of the race so far. A one-second lead is the biggest. You imagine that's how close the competition has been all day here at Daytona. We've had two cautions thus far in the event. The story has been Earnhardt. It was the story of Ken Schrader, who fought his way all the way from the back to the lead, made a second run from 15th up toward first, then lost the engine in car number 25. He has retired from the event. Richard Petty has cut down a tire. He is back on the track, running... Uh, several laps down from the leaders. Here you see some of the uh, 35 millimeter work that's going on for, for the new motion picture about stock car racing down there on Pitt Road. Earnhardt in front and seeming to be able to run by himself. That train of ours can't catch him. Hey, that's bad news for the rest of the field, Ken. When one car can pull away, as important as drafting is here, and Earnhardt still just building his lead, pulling away from the pack. Earn, uh, Earnhardt's now one point five seconds, a second and a half, and showing his hand, he's got the strong car now that Schrader is gone. Here's car number 75. Let's take a look at uh, Rick Wilson in this race. Well, he's currently running in the fourth position, having a good run, Ken. Let's see what he's done thus far. How about a starting that? position. He's working his way right up through the field, and he loves these big tracks, Talladega and Daytona. They're his cup of tea. 
Yes, they are. He started 28th, and after 50 miles, moved to 19th, and then 17th. So he just moved right on up there very nice. in my hotel, and then every day he's out there exercising, staying in shape. He's showing off well now, and that number 75 for Rick Wilson. Dave just Despain. like Chris, running on the beach every day. Here's Dave Despain. We pit reporters should have been running on the beach to stay in shape. It's hot down here, and that means it's going to be a tough day for engines. We're in the Derek Cope pit. More on his engine story. Yes, he has a 21 race deal with Hendrick Motorsports to provide engines that come out of Randy Dorton's engine shop there. For this race, a variation on that deal. Keith Dorton is a much less well-known engine builder, and he put together a Daytona special, and this crew liked it so much they said, let's run that motor and make a deal with Keith to run the engines when we're not running his brother Randy's power plant. And so it's a Keith Dorton engine here today. Go up, Tim Rose and Mike George. Well, Dave, Hendrick Engines does have five cars here at Daytona. Kenny Schrader, that's the Bingham and Revis engine. Mark Eisler and Rick Wetzel, who has Darrell Waltrip's car. Waddell Wilson, Ricky Rudd's engine. And where's Randy Dorton, the head of this organization? He is up on the roof. He's the spotter for Darrell Waltrip. And Waltrip says he's so good at it, he can't leave Dorton back at the engine shop. He's Darrell Waltrip's eyes around the racetrack. When they talk about engines, they're all essentially the same. The Chevrolet parts are in them. However, one builder will charge $18,000, and the owner at the other end of the line will charge $23,000. And that's the price range for these engines, between eighteen dollars and $23,000. And they look the same from the outside. They are different inside. Let's go now down to David Hobbs. Well, we're looking at one of those engines now which could possibly be mortally wounded. And then there's no worse feeling for a race driver than to be departed from some such race like this. The day Daytona 500 is so important to these guys. And you can see the car being worked on. There may be life in this old dog yet. We'll soon see as they look at the car and then gathered behind the car are all these reporters waiting for words of wisdom from Kenny Schrader or the owner or the crew chief. A very sad scene. One of those things so many drivers do not want to be involved with. Back to you guys in the booth. And we've now rolled down to, uh, what, 75 laps complete here in the Daytona 500. Great race going on. And as you look at this race, that whole story about Chevrolet and Ford, we heard all those stories about how Ford is going to come out here and really do it in December. Now Chevy has come right back just as they did a year ago. Well, we've got a Chevy leading, a Ford second, and an Oldsmobile third. So you got a good variety up there, and certainly the Chevrolet is, uh, is, has been the dominant car up to this point, but you still got to wonder about Bill Elliott. Is he holding anything back? Mark Martin still running in there very strong in uh, the ninth position at the moment. Elliott running up there in the fifth position. So those cars are certainly to be reckoned with before this race is over. We'll be back with more of CBS Sports live coverage of the Great American Race, the Daytona 500, after this word from your local station. Take some juice, please. Yeah. Where's Pennington? He's leading. Water. Water. Yeah. Yeah. Water, please. What car is that on the bottom? I can't read it on the screen. Which one? The screen I can't read. That the bottom race car. Beside Sterling. It's Strickland, I think. Yeah. Thank you. Is Rusty right there? Should be right there. Yeah. Should be right there. Should be 94. Here's Moroso coming back. Wow, he got back. How many cars still running, folks? Moroso's back on. Take out. Yeah. Thank you. The Daytona 500. Bus. Choices for smart people. Find the bus. Smart. Very smart. 
Goodyear Eagle radios, the best-selling performance radios in the world. And by Haviland Superior Grade Motor Oil, fight sludge, protects engines. This is the game up next here on CBS Today. Celtics and Lakers. And Don King will be on at halftime with more on that big story breaking about Buster Douglas fighting Evander Holyfield in September for the heavyweight championship. And what becomes of Mike Tyson? Stay tuned to CBS for live stories throughout this Sunday. Here now at Daytona. Showing 79 laps complete. Dale Earnhardt dominating in car number three. Not too long ago, Jack Pennington, the rookie, was leading. Where is he now? 28. <laughs> and on to pit road. Now here's the group further back. Car number 94, Sterling Marlin, heading up that count. He is running in 14th. Steve Wallace is in that group. He's uh, unhitched himself from some of those cars. Sterling Marlin's car, and it looks to me like uh, the, the number uh, 27 car of Rusty D. Wallace has pulled up and led is leading that group. At yes, this he point. has. So, so he would now be running in the 14th position, moving around Sterling Marlin. He figured, well, maybe I can pull this group a little bit faster, and maybe we can draft up to the group of cars in front of us. And that's their goal is to try to hook up together and pull up on the cars in front of them. Rusty Wallace's Pontiac just did not live up to expectation down here at all, Ned. No. In fact, he has never run good on the tracks where they require the restrictor plates. Her Harold Elliott with his motors thought they had it licked this year, but that's not the case. Let's go to David Hobbs. Hi, well, I'm with, I'm with Ann Schrader down in the pits, a very disappointed wife of Kenny Schrader. How do you feel? Well, it's kind of a disappointing day. The guys just really had the car working well, and Kenny just did an unbelievable job of coming from the back to the front. And I just couldn't believe it when I saw that puff of smoke. It must have been between one and two. Our faces went from smiles to sad. <laughs> were you as surprised as we were that he got there so quickly? No, the Kenny said it, they had gotten the car working so well, and it was feeling so comfortable. And I am a firm believer when he's in a really comfortable car, he just drives the heck out of it. And I could just see with sort of, you know, taking taking it cautiously, but was able to go very fast to the to pack. And, you know, we were just thrilled to see him up there at third and second. Well, a disappointing day, but not all bad. She's up to the condo at Ormond Beach for the rest of the afternoon. Watch it on CBS. And on CBS is Dave Despain. Where is Bill Elliott's been? Bill's been in the thick of this battle all day, but right now he seems to be stalled and he's moved to the front. He's new in in about 15 laps. Let's see if we can find out what the problem is from the new crew chief on this team, Mike Beam. What's Bill's trouble? He says he's got oil all over the windshield. He can't see, really. It's going to ride out here. We're going to stop in about 15 laps, and maybe we can get it clean for him. Is it a bad enough problem that you would bring him in early? He says he can hold on, hopefully. He, he just keeps asking how many more laps, and we just keep telling him, just hold on for a little bit. Mike's listening on the radio to Bill Elliott. Three laps ago, he said, I may have to come in. Come with me a minute. He said, I can't see at all. I may have to come in a little earlier. One other crew member here is having a little visibility problem, too. Dan Elliott is trying to watch the race here on CBS, and he says, our pit camera antenna is going to complete mess out of that. Is that right? That's correct. I'm going to have to hurry up here and get back to the program so I can see when we're coming in. If you guys keep running here, we're going to stay here and mess up your picture all day. You can mess up the picture as long as we run good. I don't, I don't care. That's Dan Elliott. Let's go up pit road to Mike Joy. Dave, we had a little trouble finding a Raymock team. They have new sponsor, new colors, and a new car, Oldsmobile, after four years with Pontiac. And they have a new driver. Right now, third place running Rick Wilson. Bob Rahilly, you guys must be pleased. He's nearly won a major race here. May do it again today. Uh, yeah, we're real pleased with the Ray Rick's running. Uh, we're trying to learn the Oldsmobile a little bit. Uh, we're a little new right now, but we feel like we're going to tighten it up on the next pit stop, which comes up in about six or seven laps. Uh, I'd like to say the opportunity to thank Jenner Bell, Food Lion, Oldsmobile for the support they've given us. Uh, I think we're going to do a real good job for them this year. We'll keep a car underneath Rick. Now tell me, is that last year's Pontiac with new skin, or is that an all-new race car? Uh, yes, it is. That's uh, last year's car that we rebodied to an Oldsmobile. And uh, as you know, it was a very competitive car last year. And uh, it looks like it's going to do the same thing this year. Well, we'll see later in this race if Rick Wilson is wearing the Emperor's new clothes. 
Ken, they will have pit stops coming up, green flag pit stops, if there's not a caution in the next six to May 15 laps. And NASCAR is allowing a sixth man over the wall to service the driver and clean the windshield. That's all that extra man can do. Now, normally, they only allow five men over the wall to service the car when he comes in for a pit stop. But today, they are allowing a sixth man. In fact, they've made that rule since the race started. So I don't know what's happening, that they're getting all of their windshields out there, but they are allowing an extra man over the wall to that's, clean the windshield. That's a sensible step for safety, because when a driver can't see, that's a dangerous situation on the track. And I commend NASCAR for that motor. Derek Cope, second spot. Rusty Wallace. Is Pontiac back further in the field, currently shown in 16th position here in the Daytona 500. How you doing? Hi, Neil. Good to see you. Welcome back. How's it going? I left my house at 4 of 8. I was here at 10.30. Uh, you mean Ormond Beach, or do you mean? <laughs> That's great. How did you do yesterday, day before? Were you a good boy? Oh, tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. Uh, all prepared. Diane? What? Diane, give Jim that press kit for Jeremy, would you? Harrington's job. That's not bad. Earnhardt's four and seven tenths seconds ahead. Yep. Let's stay with that. Yeah, that's, that's, that's remarkable, you know. He was only a second ahead, then he's a second and a half, now he's four. He's really got it on everyone. Yeah. And of course, you know, that's what Ken Schrader was doing. Will this engine last? I, I still don't think it's that hard on the engine, so. I, I, uh, what do you think wouldn't go? So. Well, I mean, certainly something happened to his engine, but yeah, I don't right. think the hard running did it. The view from the Goodyear Blimp Enterprise of the Winston Tower here at the Daytona Speedway sold out. Captain Drew Marshall and company from Pompano Beach giving us these incredible pictures of this great racing facility. And we take a look at the rundown after 200 miles have been completed. We're actually moving toward the halfway point. One more lap and there will be 90 laps down, 10 laps to go, two cross flags and all that. 30 cars are running in the lead lap as you saw that run down. All you know, the, the, lead the crowd here today, Ken, the largest in history, the first time in the history of the Daytona Speedway, they let no cars in the infield after last night. The infield was full all night long. Not a single spectator's car was permitted in the infield this morning. Checking that interval and stretching to four seconds between number three, Earnhardt, and then number 10, Derek Cope from Spanaway, Washington. Jeff Bodine in the Junior Johnson red number 11, Ford in second. These are lap cars. That's Alan Kowicki right there. And Earnhardt coming into the pit. pit. Road. The, leader. the leader is on pit road just before halfway. Here's Dave Despain. And it will be follow the leader here on pit road. The pure leader team of Derek Cope is ready to go right behind Earnhardt. Here comes the leader in. He's going four tires on the right side. Chocolate Myers goes for the gas. It looks like it's the right side only. And right behind him, Derek Cope should be coming down pit road as he is expecting to make his stop on the same way as the crew standing by. Earnhardt in and out, and still Cope has not come on pit road as expected. Well, he is taking over the lead, Dave. As a matter of fact, uh, Bill Elliott came in, but Elliott just got into the pits. Now Derek Cope coming into the pits. Elliott just got in as Earnhardt was going out, but Derek Cope dips down now to come into the pits. The Chevrolet number 10. 
How about that pit stop on Earnhardt? That seems slow. Uh, 15.95 seconds for two tires. That is slow. I tell you, it took more time to put in the gas than it did to change the tires. Now here's Derek Cole making his pit stop. This is the Whitcomb Racing Team. They come from the state of New Hampshire. I think that is an unusual spot, but let's go to Dave Despain. Buddy Barrett playing the strategist here, elected to stay out one more lap. He told us he'd follow Earnhardt into the pits. He did not do that. He stayed out. He led the race for a lap and now goes to the right side tires. It was a slow stop for Earnhardt. The problem was with gas. The stop for Cope will be even slower at 17.21 for a much less experienced pit crew. They're back underway. Davey Allison moving up through now in the car number 28. Now, that really looked like the kind of uh, garage I'd like to go to. Didn't get any free mugs or glasses, but they certainly got him in and out. That's right. No dishes. But listen, here he's in a minute and 14 seconds in the pits under the yellow flag a while ago. Now he's leading over Jeff Bodine and Terry Labonte. So they did get the front end fixed right. They got the toe in, toe right, didn't they? <laughs> yeah. Robert Yates, he'll tweak it till it's right. Crew chief on car number 28 for Davey Allison. Remember last year, right here in the back stretch, he rolled over yep. and kept on running, slid into the grass, went wheel to wheel. It looked like one of those old Economaki shows on a quarter mile track in New Jersey. What's Jeff Bodine waving about, Ned? He might be coming into the pits. No, Davey Allison is coming into the pits. Jeff Bodine going by on the outside. Look at Let's the, see him. Look at the work, how hard Bodine is working from that in car shot. That's interesting. Now, Davey Allison comes into the pits. He gives up the lead. Brett Bodine going out of the pits. It's green flag pit stop. Time for scheduled stop for everybody. Let's watch Mark Martin now as he comes in and his crew. Here's the number six coming in for its stop. This is how the driver sees it. You're watching it live in the 30-second 500. And that's Robin Pemberton, his crewman, changing that tire. With the crew cam on, that's the way that, they, that he's seeing it. Let's go to Mike Joy. Right side tires only for Mark Martin. Remember, they got gas only on that last they get a full two cans and send Martin out. 15 seconds. And the third. That isn't bad. It takes, as Ned said, it takes a while for the gas to get in. A lot of jerky movements there. And here he is, back on the track, tooling up on the track. Well, earlier this week, this is the man I had picked to win this race, Mark Martin, because of so much testing and so much determination on everyone's part from Ralph Race from Roush Racing. Everybody comes in determined, but they just did so much work over the winter. But I got to tell you, I had a change about Thursday with Earnhardt's performance. Again, he's all the way on the back stretch and just now put it in fourth gear. They put a very high third gear ratio in there so they can keep the RPMs up on the engine and they go way around the track before they finally put it in into high gear. Kyle Petty, number 42, back on the track, not currently in the top 20. Here's number 11, Jeff Bodine, the leader, the 86 champion. Now remember, he got very good gas mileage the other day, but now he's, he's coming pit. in for some gas. And Dick Trickle, a number 66, making himself known on the outside. Back to Mike Joy, waiting on Jeff Bodine. Shorty, Shorty Edwards has the signboard out. Tim Brewer has the wrench in hand, ready to go to work on the car that went the distance to win the qualifying race Thursday. Brewer around the right side on the front. Mike Hill around the right rear tire. The jack man is Pete Wright. Henry Benfield back with Junior's team after some stints with other shops has that first gas can in the air and it's away. Duck Betty has the catch can ready as Benfield puts in that second can. They're doing all four tires. Mark Cass has already loosened up the left side. Lud Ducks, Junior Johnson looking on. Tim Brewer hammers the nuts home at the front. Mike Hill at the back. 22.5 seconds for two cans of gas and four tires. Because that's the launch of the pit stop, but he's got four tires. Bill Elliott was 18 and 5, 100 seconds, one of the slowest of the Ford pit stop. Davy Allison was the fastest of the Ford men at 14.1, but he only got two tires. So Bodine now, Junior Johnson, uh, wants to do it his way, kept him in there that extra time, so he's good now for another 100 miles. That's like a good move. Yeah, I think that's good strategy, really. Uh, the car perhaps wasn't working quite as good as he wanted to. Daryl Waltrip now coming into the pits. And as uh, we see Jeff Bodine looking at the tachometer and uh, getting that car up to speed. But I think that was a good move on their part to put all four tires on. Here's Darrell Walker in the pits. Car number 17, he's been running up in the top 20, was 19th on the last rundown. Quick stop for Waltrip. Now he's going to take off in first gear as we see him go out of the pits. When he gets down about the end of pit road, he'll come down into second gear. Here he goes now, about to change into second gear. But they have to stay down on the inside of the racetrack as they go out. There's a line. You see that yellow line? Then it becomes white. And they stay down below the line that you see right on the right side. Then they can blend into traffic. He's up in third gear now. But you see he's going to be out of turn two before he'll ever put it back in the fourth gear. There he finally did it. Got the RPMs up and trying to get up to.
to speak. Dave to speak. Bobby Hill and on pit road, marching to the front, thanks to all these pit stops, gets his shot at service now as his crew goes to work. Reunited with Harry Hyde last year, veterans of the crew chief cops for the right side tires and fuel only, and Hillen is back into the battle. 15 and 4 10 seconds on Bobby Hillen's stop. Here's Maybe Eddie Allison back, back in. in. Hey, this is the second pit stop for him. He was in a little while ago, so this is an unscheduled pit stop for Davey Allison. Now to come and change the left side tires. I bet he had a vibration or maybe a tire going down. They're looking that to see which tire is a problem. I guess one of giving trouble. Three laps away from halfway, and that's worth big money this year, that halfway mark, Ned. Yes, it is. $10,000 to the driver who leads at the halfway point. That, that stop, of course, Davey Allison, another 13 seconds. We figured out the other day, slowing down and speeding up is also called this Dick Trickle being chased by Bill Elliott. Car number 66, Cale Yarborough racing colors with Dick Trickle, 49-year-old rookie of the year, one year ago in NASCAR. I don't think we ever. What am I supposed to do with this George Bush thing anytime I want? Unconfirmed report the President Bush watched the start of today's race and plans to return to his home in Kenny Buck. Just hand it to me. Lake Speed out. Going down, ran out of gas. Okay. Lake, Lake Speed was leading now. Lake Speed running, yeah. run out of gas, and I want to see the 66 car. Get a chance. Oh, that's too bad for Lake. Yeah. I have a Quaker State car in front of me and 33 is your leader, Harry Gant, right? We need to see that car. We haven't seen it all day. Okay. He's coming into the pits. Did he get the money? Yeah, yeah, on pit road. The Daytona 500 race summary is sponsored by Quaker State. The big Q is one tough motor oil. After 250 miles, had 10 different leaders, 13 lead changes, not near a record in any of those departments, nor in speed at 154 miles an hour. We've had two cautions for 12 laps, and four cars are out of the race. Here are those that have retired from competition. We had a four-car crunch early, and from that, Parsons and Alexander retired in lap 42. Ken Schrader had problems after making two valiant runs from the rear, and Phil Barkdahl has retired as well. One of the major moments in the early going, Richard Petty cutting a tire down, losing control, but not losing control. The car was out of control. He gathered it up, never got it in the wall, and he is able to continue in the event. And you notice Rob Moroso was involved in the four-car accident a little later, and uh, we didn't have his name up there being out of the race. He's back in the race now. They made repairs on his car number 20, and he's back out there running. The leader at the present time is car number three, Dale Earnhardt. But the man who came across the line as they were dipping into the pits for fuel at the halfway point was car number 33, Harry Gant and Gant collected the $10,000 prize for leading at halfway. The only lap Harry Gant has left all day worth and 10 it, grand. And, and then he did it across the start, I mean, in the pits. He was coming down pit road when the halfway signal was being given, but the start-finish line goes all the way across the pit road 
and uh, so if, he laid the lap. If his pit had been before the starting stripe, he wouldn't have gotten it. That's right. Ah, yeah. uh, we have some weather moving. We had a cold front come through last night that gave us a lot of rain, and then heaven knows they need it down here in Florida. And from NASCAR control, there's a look what's moving into this area. We're better than halfway, which would make the race official in case it had to be terminated by showers. But right now, it looks like we're going to go the distance. Let's go to Mike Joy. Ken Lake Speed was leading this race when he ran out of gas. He was trying to stretch it, that extra half lap, and take the halfway challenge money. He came up just short. This is one of the few teams that does not use a computer for fuel mileage. They keep all of their lap times and predict when they'll make their pit stops on paper. Here's David Hobbs. Well, I've been in the pits with one of the most incredible people probably in the whole race ground today, and that is Rick Hendrick, whose cars were on the front row today and last year, and your very first trip to Daytona itself was only in 1983. Where do you go to next? I don't know. Uh, I'm hoping we were going to go to Victory Lane today with one of our cars. It's a long race, and Schrader's out of it now, but, uh, you know, they're running good, and we always like to do well down here. We've had a lot of tremendous success. Uh, this is a place that uh, we want to always do well. It's the Super Bowl of our sport. Well, first and second last year, Ken Schrader made an amazing run to the front. What did you think of that? Did you expect it? Well, you know, we told him to get to the front as quick as he could, but be careful. And uh, I've never seen a car come through the pack, especially since we've been running the restrictor plate as well as that car did. Kenny did a heck of a job of driving, and just a credit to the setup and the car with the backup car to come to the front in 20-some laps. So... And he was just taking it easy when we had a, had a failure, but uh, that's racing. Well, unlike most owners down here, you've got two more shots in the locker. You've got T. Rudd and Darrell Waltrip. Can either of those two guys win this race yet? Darrell is getting comfortable. He's adjusting the car. He feels okay. Ricky's really happy with his car. He's been running in the top ten all day. And they're just wait waiting to get him right there at the end. It's no sense in going out there racing right now as hard as you can go. So I, we've got our hopes up, and we, we're going to run them hard there all day. Well, you sort of started to take over NASCAR front row twice in a row. Uh, any other plans after NASCAR days? Not right now. We want to win the championship this year. We're working awful hard towards that goal. You know, the, all the teams are doing well, and we're just excited about what we've got to look forward to this year. We've had a great year last year. We're off to a good start. So we're just going to try to do the best we can with what we got. Okay, well, that's Rick Hendrick, a very powerful man in NASCAR circles, but a bit disappointed today. Ken? The second-place battle is where the story is right now. There lies Derek Cope in the Whitcomb car. Number 10, Terry Labonte there, Jeff Bodine, Rick Wilson all in the mix, lapping number 42, Kyle Petty, the Felix Sabetta's car on the bottom of the racetrack. Here's Mark Martins, number 6, that lies, that was lying 6. He tries to move beneath Rick Wilson. Rick tagging along with his old buddy, A.J. It had to be the halfway mark before Rusty Wallace became a factor, and he's moved into the top ten, the defending national champion. Here he is taking a look uh, on the track there with the champion, Rusty Wallace, into the main straightaway. That's Dick Trickle right in front of him in the number 66 Prop Arctic car. They're running eighth and ninth now. Trickle running in the eighth position, Rusty running in ninth. And Joe Rutman, a lap car just on the bottom there as they approach turn number one. But Dale Earnhardt has pulled out to about a 10-second lead over Dave, Derek Cope, who is running in second place. This is remarkable, the performance of Earnhardt's car. Uh, 10 seconds is an unheard of lead here these days. Not, looks like Atlanta at the end of the season. Richard Petty is back on pit road. Atlanta last year, final race. Earnhardt just ground everybody down before he won that 500. Petty came in a little bit crossways. He was about to lose it coming into the pits and didn't get into the pits uh, quite as straight as he would like to have, but this is an unscheduled pit stop for Petty. Right side tires, maybe going around for left side, too. Again, the King had trouble here. Cut a tire down in turn one. He did a masterful job of keeping it out of the wall and able to continue. You know, one of the things that just puzzles me, always will puzzle me, is why it is when one of these cars has a soft tire the driver nor the crew can tell which one it is and they have to change all four. Why is that, Ned? Well, it's very difficult at these speeds because on the high banks of a track like this, there's so much pressure on each tire, it's difficult to tell. You can tell that one is down, the car will get loose, but it's very difficult to tell which tire it is. Dale Earnhardt continues to blitz him here in the Daytona 500, looking for his first win in the great American race.
<laughs> He's still off headset, Bob. Hello, I'm back on. I'm back on. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yep. That is 2730. Excuse, excuse me, I'm going off headset. <clears throat> Thank you. I'm with you. <laughs> oh, let him go. <laughs> Well, here are the standings after 270 of 500 miles with Earnhardt out in front. Derek Cope in the Whitcomb Racing Stable car just having a wonderful day. Jeff Bodine line third. Labonte is fourth with his new team. And the Jackson brothers have got to be happy about his run. In the second five, Rusty Wallace found himself ninth after 270 miles with Mike Waltrip rounding out that top ten. That's the first time we've seen Michael in the top ten, but he's had a good steady run so far here today, running 11th. Is the Bobby Hillenar, Bill Elliott is 12th, Morgan Shepard 13th, and Neil Body 14th, Jimmy Spencer 15th. And there you see the number 66 car followed by 27 and 38, 9 and 10. Right there, Dick Trickle for Kelly Arborough Racing Colors stays up in the top 10 at the present time. Tough race driver. He looked really good in the 125 milers, Chris. Oh, that that he did. You know, he won Rookie of the Year honors even at his age, and he gets an extra thousand dollars every race he runs it here. It's a 29 race schedule, so that's 29. Thousand dollars for Dick Trickle. He's won over a thousand races in his career, and most of those races never paid a thousand or more to win. <laughs> One of the interesting things that uh, Trickle said the other day was, he says, you know, in the old days, I ran the rookie meetings. I ran the rookie meetings for Alan Kowicki and Rusty Wallace and all those, because he's when I came to Winston Cup a year ago, they ran my rookie meetings. <laughs> Let's go to Mike Joy. Ken, there's good reason why these cars are up front. Fast pit stops under the green flag, and they're getting faster. Modified racer George Brunholzl builds this jack. It's made out of all aluminum, and it weighs only 35 pounds with the handle, half what the previous garage jacks used. You're familiar with the way that they glue the lug nuts onto the wheels so they're right there, ready to be hammered home. Well, here's what's next. Ray and Ron Garuti up in Connecticut manufacture a wheel with the lug nuts held on by spring tension. You can't lose one. That's an important safety factor. They're using it now on the short tracks, and they'll be testing it soon with Winston Cup cars. It'll make these pit stops even quicker. Let's for Dave Despain. And Mike, we've slipped behind pit road for just a moment, and inside 190 mile per hour video game. We're in the broadcast sports technology trailer where they were controlling the in-car cameras, 10 in all today. A staff of five technicians have mounted and maintained the cameras. The signal goes from the camera to a helicopter high over the speedway, then back down to the broadcast center. The cameras themselves are controlled by the video master here. And I want to ask George Graffio, First of all, is this a lot of fun? Fun. You know, I have two children, and they have Sega Genesis and Nintendo. And by far, this is the best video game ever. Is this how you? Is that how you practice? You practice it over in your living room? Oh, every every night. We're home. We're, we're playing uh, Nintendo. We're playing Mario Brothers. And now we're playing Face Cam. And if you're ready, I'll show you how it works. Basically, you press this button here, and with a small button, you have Face Cam. And here you have Mark Martin behind a wheel. 
and back again. You press another button, and here you have bumper. This is bumper cam, and the output of, the, of Mark Martin's back of his car. With another small push of the finger, we have, again, front over his shoulder. <laughs> and that's when your joystick comes into play, which is a lot like uh, video games, isn't it? Oh, yeah. I mean, you could, you could basically go 360 degrees. Here we go. 360, coming right back, and there we are. About how much does all this equipment in the car weigh? How much are we talking about for the guys to uh, haul around? I think basically it has to be more than less than 20 pounds. I mean, you, I think I think I um, and I could be wrong, could be more or less, but uh, 20 pounds is basically it. Point is, the technology's come a long way over the years, hasn't it? Oh, without a doubt. If you remember the first time we we done this in 1981, I think we just had one static camera, and now we can rotate 360 degrees. We have an output of three different cameras in one car. I think we've come a long way. If you like the pictures, here's the guys who make it possible. Let's go back topside and see Mark Martin Pitt. He's running in sixth position. You see behind him Richard Petty running several laps down. Dave Marcus in his 23rd Daytona 500. But Mark Martin's hit crew is out on pit road with the signboard ready to bring him in. We'll see if he does come in the next time around. Not that lap. You can see there is the man out with the pit board. Remember, he has fallen back to 10th now. Up to ninth is moved Michael Waltrip. To eighth is the Rusty Wallace car. You know, it's interesting. He's coming in on lap 118. 120 is 300 miles. Uh, last year in the firecracker race, he had it one except he ran out of fuel. Now, these cars, under certain circumstances, can get 100 miles out of a tank full. He's coming in a little short of 100 miles required. Be one lap short. Well, they can get well, actually more than that now. Yeah. Those 125s, we saw them go right. that. 125 mile distance with several cars this year. So maybe Mark Martin can make it on one stop after this. And as we watch Mark Martin, A.J. Foyt has gone into the garage area. Let's take one more lap with Mark Martin here. This incredible picture out of his automobile. Here are positions one through six. Earnhardt staying in front and continuing to develop that lead. More than 12 seconds now. Atlanta replay from 1989 when he just bulldozes the field. A.J. Foyt has gone back to the garage. We're sorry to report. You know, it's been 18 years since A.J. won one of these races. 18 years and not today for A.J. Oldsmobile colors of A.J. Foyt out of it. Here's number nine, Bill Elliott, scooting around and picking up a spot. That'll move Barton out another position. Moves Bill Elliott up to 11th. It keeps Mark Martin in 12th. And we are currently showing 21 cars remaining in the lead lap of this 500 after we've run more than half the distance. That's amazing. Yes, it really is. But we've seen that a lot in the restrictor plate when they run the restrictor plates. And Ken, I wonder if Mark Martin has radio communication with his crew because that man stayed out there on pit road for about four laps with the board ready to bring Mark in. And he just keeps circling the racetrack. I wonder if they, well, for something from the pits, let's go to Mike Joy. Well, Mark Martin's team was out there with the pit board. That was Troy Martin with the signboard. Last time they only got those two tires, and they thought really they needed four. Martin says the handle is going away. Then he thought he could ride it a while, and now they put the wrenches down for the moment. But they're ready in case he loses too much ground. They'll have to bring him in to keep from losing a lap. Now watch Mark Martin at the wheel here. Watch his eyes how he looks up at the mirror. So many times he constantly monitors that mirror. You can see the whites of his eyes as he looks up to see who's behind him. Now he was talking to his radio to his crew says I'm coming in he gave the signal to the car behind him so evidently he is coming in now let's follow Mark Martin in car number six he's been a serious contender thus far is staying up in this lead lap he may have trouble uh, can he pit it, pit it only 28 laps ago so he's coming in awfully early he went well he didn't come in that time. Time. yeah I, I thought he was giving a signal to the car behind him that he was uh, coming in Let's go to David Hobbs. Well, just to go on what Ned and Chris said a few minutes ago about drivers not knowing when they've got a flat tire and which one it is. Well, the thing is, is that these radial tires have such incredibly stiff sidewalls. I mean, they really are very, very stiff. And doing a couple hundred miles an hour, the centrifugal force means that these tires retain their exact blown up shape. 
and the only thing that happens is as soon as you hit the banking or any other corner, the tyre that is loaded and is flat ultimately, of course, deflects. Now, there is a safety thing that's coming out. Bill Elliott's car has on board an infrared uh, gauge that reads the temperature of the tyre across the shoulder. This is exactly the same as those guys, the Goodyear guys, when you come into the pit, they stick the needle in and take the temperature of the tyres. Well, Bill Elliott can read the temperature of his tyres all the time he's going. Now, NASCAR have mandated that he can only do that for safety reasons, to tell if the tyre's going down, because obviously it'll suddenly start to get hot. And in Europe, Jaguar have been using a device that tells you when the pressure is dropping in a tyre. And I'm sure that these are things that we'll see introduced very soon on all race cars in the form of safety. Ken? Still waiting on Mark Martin to see if he is going to draw in here. Here's that battle that continues for second place. Eight second interval by which Earnhardt leads over the red and white car number 10, Derek Koch, then number 11, Bodine and the junior Johnson Ford runs third. Rick Wilson's Oldsmobile, number 75, the yellow car, is in fourth. In fifth is Ricky Rudd's Chevrolet, and sixth is Terry Labonte, with seventh, Rusty Wallace, eighth, Mike Waltrip. We'll be back with more of CBS Sports live coverage of the Daytona 500 after this commercial and a word from your local station. Time to coming into the pits. It's, it's like 13 or 14 seconds. Try it right now. There he is. Now pan back. Pan back. Nothing but daylight between. Nothing but daylight. That shows you how much there is. And then you'll find your... There they are. <coughs> 12 and a half seconds. Just, just... And then now I know where they are on the racetrack. If you do that pan back, I really understand it. How long has Whoop. it been? If they continue under green, he'll lap the field. Yes, they will. And it's amazing. We need to establish that Mark Martin did make that pit stop. He's a lap down. But I need that pan to really understand. And right behind those three are the next two stories. Do you follow me? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. the dominator in the Daytona 500. He now leads by better than 12 seconds. There's the interval back to that flock of cars running for second, third, fourth positions. Derek Cope, Jeff Bodine, Rick Wilson. And then behind them, you see the number five car. That's uh, Ricky Rudd and that yellow machine that is running in the fifth position. Terry Labonte's machine is running in sixth just behind that group. Further back in the field, you see in seventh, Mike Waltrip's number 30 car. In eighth is Rusty Wallace. Ninth is Bobby Hillen. And tenth is Dick Trickle. Now you see the yellow car number five there and then that black machine? That's the car of Ricky Rudd, 
in fifth, and that black car is the uh, Jackson Brothers, number one, and they're closing up Ricky Rudd and Terry Labonte on this trio that run two, three, and four in the race. Yeah, those are your second through sixth place cars. You can see Terry Labonte in the picture there just a moment ago. Now, Mark Martin did make his pit stop while we were away on the commercial break. He has gone a lap down. We're riding with Mark Martin there at the moment, but he is a lap down. He changed all four tires on his Ford. The, you know, the average speed at 120 laps was 160.666 miles an hour for Earnhardt. But the record for the 500 miles was set 10 years ago by Buddy Baker at 177.682. But it's interesting. The way Earnhardt is going, he may lap the field. And the first time that will happen, or the last time it happened, was in 76 and before that, 1975. So Mr. Earnhardt really is showing us his hand today. Buddy Baker really missed here today not being part of the program for the first time. Uh, his team just wasn't able to come together, and so he's had to sell the team off. And the man that won that race in 1980 at 177 mile an hour average is not in the starting field. Here's Mike Jordan. Well, if there was a gas gauge in Mark Martin's car, it would read full, and a tire gauge, it would read new. Jack Roush again playing the percentages before they put on fuel only. Then they got just two tires, and they found the car just wasn't working. So before they got further and further behind, they had to come in and take on four, and that has put them down. Let's go to David Hobbs. Well, I'm with A.J. Foyt in his pit. A.J., you quit the race. What happened? Well, actually, the heat, and I had a new uniform. I had a brand new helmet, and I guess the glue that was in it just got me completely drunk, and... <laughs> Right now, I don't think the average person can smell it five minutes if you want to smell it. <laughs> yeah, I can smell it okay. Otherwise, the car was running good. It was running pretty good. We had to draft all day, but I just got so dizzy there that I felt like I was going to injure myself or somebody else, so I just had to quit. And, uh, I just can't. I don't know how people can take dope and drive because talking about a drunk, I was drunk the last 20 laps, and I figured park it before I hurt myself or somebody else. How many more times are we going to see you back here at Daytona 500? Well, I hope we come back at least a couple of times, but, uh, you know, we've had our luck. We've won about three of the big races here. We're happy, and we're running good today. Started off bad here when we got here, and we run good in 125 miles, and we are running good today until we had a problem on one of the pit stops. Uh, just one of them things we had a, you know. Yeah. Well, that's tough luck, A.J. Thanks very much. And back to you, Ken. A.J., out with you. Poor A.J. came unglued here today. I'll tell you, that's the first time that I've ever heard, and it was very nice to hear him be so honest about what, what the reason was, but I've never heard of that being given as a reason for a driver being out of a race. It's a strange one. Somebody at the W.C. Fields would have said somebody left the cork out of his luck. <laughs> <laughs> Dale Earnhardt, number three, stays up in front, about to lap Jimmy Beans, hovering overhead at Goodyear Blimp Enterprise, giving us these pictures of the Daytona 500. Earnhardt's lead, incredible. He's led 100 of 126 laps. Hmm? Go ahead. No, I... And if we can go back down over the list, even if we ju just do it by audio, I'll be sure. glad to read, read down over the top 20. We've got 19 cars in the lead lap. We ought to let the fans know where yep. they are running. Bobby, can we just go back from car to car to those leaders? You got that? Yeah, give us one more time on that. Somebody switch sides on that quick part. And go back even further. Show us that uh, number 15. We haven't talked about it. <clears throat> Didn't Richard lead 184 of 180 of, of the, in 64? How many laps? He, it was an incredible number. Yeah. Lead on pit road. Leaders on pit road. He'll probably take home four this time. Yeah. You bet. He's going to have to stop again.
he'll be gone. He's going all the way around? Yeah. slowly only because he just pitted car number three he's just come out of the pits he's into the back straightaway picking up speed in that machine and it's given Jeff Bodine the lead with Rick Wilson Ricky Rudd and that crowd on pit on the back stretch at the present time because Derek Cope made a pit stop also Dave Despain is with the man making the call on Earnhardt's call car Richard Childress and Childress still checking with his driver to make sure everything went smoothly a nice pit stop. Are you happy with the way it turned out? Yeah, it looked real good and clean. You know, we wanted to do four tires and not take no chance. You know, to get the car back, get the stagger all back like we wanted. We had a 13-second lead, so we were able to do it. My question is, how much do you want to lead this race by? How are you determining how far out there you want to run, how hard to run the car? Well, we wanted to get about 12 seconds on them then to do a full tire and be real safe in case they done two, but we want to lead the last, last one. Are you going to continue to press for that big lead from here, or are you going to lay back a little? Yeah, we're going to, you know, we'll just run the same pace all day. That's our plan. That pace has been right around 48 seconds, high 47s when he was clear of traffic. It built a huge lead before the pit stop. Let's see what Childress Man can do now with a fresh horse. Our Dale Earnhardt's pit stop, though, was 23.9 seconds for the four tires. Well, Derek Cope stop. He got the two tires in 15 and a half seconds. The interesting thing to me is the timing of the stop. Earnhardt is going to have to make one more stop for fuel before this race gets the checkered flag. Wilson, Marlin, Michael Waltrip, Dick Trick, or Neil Bonnet all making green flag stops. Jimmy Means, Lake Speed at this point. Jeff Bodines, number 11, is your leader. And number five, Ricky Rudd, now takes over in second spot. Third, number one, Terry Labonte. Front three, the fourth car would become Rusty Wallace. Remember, he started way back on this field, Chris, and he's developed himself a, a contender now. He took his time. You know, it's, his drive has not been the typical Wallace swashbuckling, wall-to-wall, hard-charging drive. He's been very consistent, and he's doing extremely well up there in fifth place with 150 miles to go. And Eddie started 38th on the field. These are green flag stops. Earnhardt willing to give up that lead for that four-tire change. This is the battle for the lead. And here's Rudd alongside Jeff Bodine and going for it. The Ford on the inside, the Chevy on the outside. And Rudd uh, makes it look relatively easy there. Both of those drivers will have pit stops coming up here very shortly as well. You know, there's only been two caution flags so far to Pure since 1975 when they had three. But three of the first four Daytona 500s were run with no yellow flag. Here's number five, Ricky Rudd, now out in front of Rusty Wallace, who's carved his way up through the field. He's come in for fuel now. He's on pit road. This is your front three cars, Ricky Rudd in car number five, Jeff Bodine in car number 11, and Terry Labonte in car number one. Looks to me like uh, number five, Ricky Rudd's getting ready. He ran that yep. car out of fuel in a 125-mile qualifier, and he's diving on to pit road. Here's Rusty Wallace pulling back on the track after he stopped for fuel and run. And he's already has it up in third gear as he goes on to the banking now as he heads into the turn. 139 laps are complete as they make these stops of the 200 in the in the 500-mile race. Mike Joy. Here's Ricky Rudd in for his stop, and they're doing it a little different, Waddell Wilson's team. Not right, but left side tires for Rudd's car. To adjust the stagger that way, they changed the right last time. They changed the tires quickly. Then they have to wait for that final bit of gas to dribble down, and then Rudd is away. And as he comes out, car number one, Terry Labonte has just slipped under number 11. And Terry Labonte went sideways. Oh, he really did yeah. get sideways. Oh. <laughs> Hold on. He did a good job of bringing it back in. Jeff Bodine now coming down pit road. For his pit stop, we'll watch him come in. Shorty Edwards out there with the pit board. Brave souls, those that goes out there with that pit board, but Shorty stays right there with him. And, of course, he comes around to clean the 
grill off the car while they change the right side tires and fill it up with gas. Sooner or later, you take that job, you do get upended. You become a hood ornament. Yeah, I said right side tires there, too, like the car number five changed left side tires. Now, remember the last time they changed right side, so this time they changed left side tires. Pretty good pit time, 14 and a half seconds. Yet all of the contenders that are stopping now will have to stop at least one more time before this race is over. take a look from inside one of the cars as we watch what happened to uh, Terry Labonte. This is Bodine's pictures of car number one. Woo. Labonte, as he started off at turn four, the back end broke loose, but he did a great job of saving that car. Well, what, about, what about the driver in Bodine's position? You're watching this happen directly in front of you. He was very, very cautious at that time as we look at it from another angle as the back end gets loose. And Bodine, I'm sure that back off this side, well, not much. He's coming up on him, but he sees that Terry apparently is going to get it straightened out. So he just uh, barrels on around. Terry Labonte's number one. The one thing you don't want to do is overcorrect. Here's Mike Joy. Tim Brewer is crew chief for Jeff Bodine. Tim, you were in not that long ago for four tires, and you're right back in for left. Well, Earnhardt seems to have a slight advantage over us, as you can probably see, so we're going to have to change up a little bit, see if we can change the strategy in here and maybe get a little bit closer to him for the, for the shootout here later on. It's one of those deals, we're going to stop and get gas, and he's going to stop and get gas, and we're going to let them two guys have at it, Mike. If it comes down to a drag race, can you run with him? He's awful strong. And we'll see. <laughs> Back up there. 142 laps are complete, and it's getting down to that time when gamblers play the long odds in the great American race. Terry Labonte, car number one, leads at this moment. Bobby Hill in the second, and Earnhardt's back to third. I'm going to read that off the card, right? And then pick up there again. Wait a minute, say that again. Oh, I see. Don King. Sure. Okay, that's coming up next. <clears throat> Showing 143, is that complete? Correct? Uh -huh. 143? Uh -huh. Thank you. You need to show me the, the, these cars, the 1, 8, and 3, and 17. Here comes Walter back into the picture. 1, 8, 3, 17, and 57 if they all stay out. I yeah, got to think they're going to be... He's coming in right now, Walter Pierce. Yeah. Thank you. What, hey, Ned, what did Foyt say gave him the... Put the fumes? fumes from the helmet, though. The glue in the, in the helmet. Oh. 144. Okay. The Ambroid, huh? <clears throat> Coming up following the Daytona 500, it's the NBA on CBS. Larry Bird and the Boston Celtics take on Magic Johnson and the L.A. Lakers. And at halftime today, a live interview with Don King, Tyson's manager, because the story now is that Tyson will have to step aside while Holyfield gets a fight with Buster Douglas. And tomorrow at 1.30 Eastern, bonus coverage of the NBA. When Akeem Olajuwon and the Houston Rockets take on Michael Jordan and the Chicago Bulls. Here is Jimmy Spencer's car on pit road that's been running up here with the leaders. And the one car that has been leading, car number one, is in the pits. Terry Lamonte, here's Dave Despain. 
Leader on Fed Road, Roger Fortney goes to the right front. Tony Lambert to the right rear as they clean the windshield and gas the car. Lamonti trying to get in and out and salvage this lead, although that's going to be very difficult to do as they will go to a four-tire stop. Gary Brooks going to the right side of the car now to jack it up. Roddy Acoff finishing his fueling responsibility ahead of the tires. That is uh, all done, and now they're just waiting to get the tires on and out the door. 25-9, the time. Let's go to Mike Joy. Mark Martin had left side tires, but that didn't improve the handling of his board enough. Now it's right side tires. They're checking things over, and Martin is waiting for a cold drink. It is hot inside the cockpit of that board. Steve Emile and Robert Pemberton with our pit cam working the right front, having a little extra time getting that right front wheel secured. Now they're all set, just waiting to drop the jack, finishing up on the right rear. Lengthy pit stop, excru excruciatingly long. Mark Martin a miscue, and he goes away with two fresh tires. Yeah. And you can see that frustration on his face as he goes out of the pits. That was much longer than he wanted to be in there. And Mike, it looked like that they might have made a chassis adjustment on the right front before they put the right front tire on there. They were doing something under there, and when you make an adjustment on the right front spring, it has more effect on the chassis than any other spring around the car. Now, whether that's what they were doing, I don't know, but they did something under that right front, a little bit extra besides changing the tire. It was almost 42 seconds in the pits. Uh, I was on the impression they weren't allowed to make those front end adjustments. Oh, yeah. They, well, they can make the adjustments. They can't change springs. At one time, they could actually change springs, but they can't do that. But if they got the tire off, they can make that, uh, that adjustment. Of it. Well, that was a long, long stop. It's going to have to be a very beneficial adjustment for them to make up the loss. Time. Well, here's the man, and now out in front, Bobby Hillen in car number eight. Harry Hyde prepared car for the Zabola brothers. <laughs> but uh, he has yet to make a pit stop. Man. Bobby Hillen, <laughs> Harry Hyde says there's three places to run in the race, with the good or with the bad or with the ugly out here. And from their starting point today, they really came out of meanness. They moved their way back up through the field. He says he doesn't like cars to start too far back in these races. <laughs> they had a good run, but... This team has a second car just for testing its truck and a crew. It's as though they were going racing or they go to test tracks just to make sure the car is right for the track. And it looks now like it's paying off. Let's take a look at the bus line the leaderboard. After 350 miles, Terry Labonte was then leading with Bobby Hillen in second, Earnhardt third. Earnhardt's now up to second, Darrell Waltrip. Taking a look at that second five, Bill Elliott still in there. We have 11 cars in the lead lap on our Budweiser scoreboard. And at that point, the 11th car was being shown uh, as, as Wallace with Wilson and number five, Ricky Rudd, in those tail end positions. We now have perhaps a sleeper on our hands, Bobby Hillen may be able to make it to the checkered flag on the onboard fuel. He's the only one on the track right now that couldn't do that. He's Dave in the pit right now. Uh, Harry Hyde, the man who has built this team into a contender, waits with the signboard. His young driver, Bobby Hillen, comes down pit road, overshoots pit. Hyde is known for bringing along young talent, and he gave this man his first super speedway win. As they clean the windshield, Hyde's team go to work. It's a crew that he's had around him for years. And they are going to go to the right side, then come back to change the left side tires. Again, they will outlast. The, the fueling will not take as long as the tire change, unlike a two-tire stop. And the leader, Bobby Hillen, gives up the lead. The crew get their words. He's out in 25-9. Let's go to my tour. Well, Robert Pemberton is here. You can see he's bringing the Norman our CBS pit cam. You guys aren't having your usual fun day. What happened? What'd you do on that last pit stop? Well, uh, there's a header pipe dragging right now uh, a little bit. It's not handling real good, and we're we're working on it as hard as we can. Uh, something happened about 60 laps ago. We've been running real good, and all of a sudden it's, it's just super loose, and we can't seem to do anything to fix it. What adjustment did you make on the right front to try to fix the handle? Mainly we're looking for a problem, uh, something that was broke, and they're making the car handle as bad as it is. Uh, so far, we haven't found anything. They're perplexed here in the Mark Martin pit. The man who's perplexing everyone here is this man, the man in black, Dale Earnhardt, back in command of the Daytona 500 with 151 laps complete.
Uh, give me a new rundown quickly, please. I think Bodine is in third place. Uh, the 11 car? Yeah, Hillen, Hillen, Hillen is Hillen. now a lap down. Can you change that leaderboard? Hill has gone down. Thank you. Lost a lap? Yeah. So he was, uh, Earnhardt was about to pass him for the lead yeah. when Hillen came into the pits. And as a result of the four tire change, he went a lap down. He's right behind Earnhardt, not yeah. too far behind him. Yeah, I see him. Earnhardt trying to put a lap on Dick Trickle. You're not having much luck. No, Trickle using <laughs> up the racetrack. Position on Trickle, please. On Dick Trickle. It's about okay. 13. And he's in the lead lap. He's trying to stay there. Yeah. That's the story. <clears throat> This is a good story right here. Trickle's trying to stay in the lead lap. Yeah. And he's using the racetrack. <laughs> Earnhardt was a little critical of him Thursday, you know, yeah. on that, uh, when he caught him using the racetrack. This Daytona 500 race summary is sponsored by Quaker State. The Big Q is one tough motor oil. After 375 miles, 13 different leaders, 21 lead changes, and they're averaging 164 miles an hour with a couple of cautions for 12 laps. Seven cars have officially retired from the 32nd annual Daytona 500. Out of the race, Bill Parsons out early, Mike Alexander, Ken Schrader, who twice came up through the field, then had his engine expire. Phil Barkdahl is gone. Young Mr. Horton, who won the Arca race a uh, week ago. Car number 80, it's gone away. And A.J. Foyt, he had uh, smelling salts problems out here, so he reported. The glue in his helmet gave him a little trouble. Robbie Moroso has brought his car back to the garage area. Once again, the 21-year-old rookie. And here is the leader, car number three, Earnhardt. And right now, Earnhardt has been following Dick Trickle for three laps, unable to pass. And er this Trickle is running on the tail end of the lead lap. On our latest rundown, at 150 laps, car number 66, Earnhardt, was being shown, or rather number 66, Trickle, was being shown in 13th place on the end of the lead lap of Mr. Earnhardt. I think this is a new conservatism Dale Earnhardt is showing us here. He wouldn't wait ordinarily to pass somebody, but he's sort of tiptoeing behind Dick Trickle. And was critical of Trickle in the 125-mile qualifier for using up a lot of racetrack. Well, of course, Trickle was leading the race at that time, and Earnhardt had made a pit stop and came up on him and was not able to get around him for quite a while because Trickle knows how to use a racetrack and uh, is doing a good job of it right now. Now, also, Trickle put on four new tires, as Earnhardt did on their last pit stop, but Earnhardt made his pit stop about 12 laps before Trickle did, and so Trickle's tires are much fresher than Earnhardt's. Now the second-place car, there it is, Whitcomb Racing Stable from New England. Derek Cope from Spanaway, Washington, the driver. And here you see the third-place car, number 11, Jeff Bodine, in that Junior Johnson prepared Ford. That car, for two straight years, has won a 125-mile qualifier. Well, we said that Earnhardt would have to make one more pit stop. Most of them, excepting maybe Bobby Hillen. I think he's the only one that might be able to go the distance from here. Here's the projection. His last pit stop was made on lap 134. He's averaging about 49 laps per tank of fuel, so he'll have to stop again at about lap 183. That's 17 laps short of the bench. Right now, he's got a 17-second edge on the second-place car, Derek Coe. Of course, Alan we think Kowicki pitting right now. And that fellow play. really enjoying this race, isn't he? Yeah. Listening on the radio. He said his eyes closed, and that's so he could really focus on yeah. it. <laughs> Kowicki not having one of his better days, not as good a day as he had here last year. Four-tire change. Involved in a spin earlier in the race, but came back out. Kept going. CBS would like to thank Junior Johnson, and his great race team, the Hendrick Motorsports folks, Roush Racing, and uh, Raymond Beetle, Blue Max, for the assistance today with the in-car cameras in this event. 
Here you see that difference once again as Trickle does not want to owe a lap down to Earnhardt. He really hangs it right in there. And Earnhardt not taking any chances whatsoever. He's uh, running a good, comfortable speed. Maybe he's running as fast as he wants to. And so he's just following Trickle around. He's certainly conserving some fuel by following him around, but he has another pit stop. He can't conserve enough fuel that he can go to balance the race. And it's a replay exactly of what we saw in Atlanta, Georgia, the last race. Yeah. Earnhardt dominating, running the race just about as he wants to here. More of the 500 in a moment. Okay, I'll trip Kim as he comes back in. No. Oh, he's back. Hello? Yeah. Sure, okay. I mean, okay. Look at that infield crowd. Do what, sir? Back with you at the Daytona International Speedway, taking a look at the leaderboard. After 398 of the 500 miles have been registered as Earnhardt continues to blast through the field, run it his way and nobody else's. Derek Cope is standing second. Jeff Bodine is in third. Ricky Rudd is in fourth. Rusty Wallace in fifth. And Rick Wilson is in sixth. And this car, number three, looks as bulletproof. Oh, look at car number 66 again, holding there from this great shot from the Goodyear blimp. Trickle trying to stay in that lead lap. Earnhardt not taking any chances. Now, this will be a position for Bodine in the green car. The Kenny Bernstein car number 26 is a position for Trickle. Trickle running 13th, Bodine running in the 12th position. So he is letting Earnhardt push him up there. Them two working together is helping to catch Brett Bodine. Despite the fact that uh, Earnhardt has been sitting behind Dick Trickle, look at it. Here he's going to get by him on the inside after all these laps. He has stretched his advantage over Derek Cope from 17 to 20 seconds. And there he's waited long, maybe 10 or 12 laps, to make that pass and put Dick Trickle in front of this. He's one lap down. As well as Bodine going down a lap, and Trickle moves into the 12th spot. Bodine falls to 13th as we watch them coming through the tri-oval area right in front of the pit area here into the turn one. Now there are 11 cars left in the lead lap. Uh, a moment ago when we gave a rundown, we said there were 11 cars in the lead lap, but that was during green flag pit stop, so we had a jumbling there for a little while, but now there are 11 cars in the lead lap. Neil Bonney currently running into the 11th position, so he's the last car on the lead lap. Michael Walker running 10th. Morgan Shepard What makes this car, this number three, seemingly so bulletproof? Uh, 
Marte. They have just been so great over the year, Richard Childress and his team, in putting together a car. They don't leave any stone unturned when they're building a car and preparing it for each individual race. They work together so well. You wonder uh, what all these drivers are great families here. You wonder what they do with the kids and all of that during the race. The cops can give us some insight. Well, more and more of these NASCAR drivers relax in these luxurious motorhomes before and during the race. And relaxing in here is one Jessica Waltrip. Jessica, have you been watching your father on the TV? No, not really. What's your car? What's daddy? What's daddy's car number? What does he drive? T-I-D-E. T-I-D-E Tide. Well, she's got that bit right. This kid's learning real fast. That's how they can afford these motorhomes in the first place. Again, there is the 17. Daryl Waltrip. Not his best day in this 500 at all. He is being shown a lap down in 17th position, the defending 500-mile champion here behind Dave Marcus. Yeah, he's not, he just hasn't had a good day. That car, he dropped back in the very early part of the race. They made some adjustments on it. They just never really got it up to going. And you would wonder, you know, a year ago, he was up there, a major force that came home to win the Daytona 500. And you said, well, why can't he do it again? Well, things change. You know, the racetrack's a little bit different this year. And competition is a little bit different here and there. And they're running a 15, 16th inch carburetor restrictor plate. Last year, they had a one inch carburetor restrictor plate. Although I don't think that it's a lack of horsepower that Walter is experiencing. I think they just missed the chassis setup. And two, the tires that they're running here today are a little harder rubber compound than what they ran here a year ago. So, you know, there's a number of factors that come into play every time they go from one racetrack to another or from one year to the next. Car number 17 holding down that position out of the lead lap, not where he likes to be in a 500 mile race, 400 lap race, 10 lap race. He wants to be up on top. Here you see some of the uh, safety crew here at the Daytona Speedway who do such an extraordinary job. We'll tell you a little bit more about them in a moment. We'll be back with more of CBS Sports live co coverage of the Daytona 500 after this word from your local station. CBS Sports Special, the Daytona 500, is sponsored by the Die Hard Battery. Now with more power when you need it most. And, and while we're on nine, stay on it a little bit. And we'll talk about his mother, who's in the hospital. Uh, Bill Elliott's Bill mother. Elliot. Uh, pretty far. He's running by himself on the racetrack. He's now approaching turn one. This CBS Sports Special, the Daytona 500, is sponsored by the Die Hard Battery. Now with more power when you need it most. And by Valvoline, the high-performance motor oil company. People who know use Valvoline. Leaderboard. 420 of 500 miles complete. The man in black. 
his being a Darth Vader here today in this Daytona 500. Dale Earnhardt commanding. Cope staying second. Great performance by him. Jeff Bodine, the 86 winner, is third. Ricky Rudd right there in fourth. Dale Elliott is in fifth. And looking further back, defending Winston Cup champion, Rusty Wallace stays in the lead lap in six. Michael Waltrip is having a very good day, and Morgan Shepard's been overlooked in his ride with that Bud Moore team doing a terrific job. There have been 19 different 500 winners in the 31 previous races, and these people are looking on to see if there will be a 20th today and a guy named Earnhardt. You know, the battle for a victory by a manufacturer Ford holds the lead with seven victories, and Chevy is second with six. It could tie it if Earnhardt wins today, making it seven all between Ford and Chevrolet. And for Earnhardt, this is his 12th time in the 500. Let's take a look at how this field is assembled as we get down toward the finish. Earnhardt lapping Larry Pearson coming out of turn four is most definitely in command of this race. On the back stretch. There you find the second place car. That is number 10, Derek Cope, in second position with his Chevrolet. Running all alone. The third position is car number 11. That's Jeff Bodine in the Junior Johnson Ford. There's Darrell Waltrip with him. Of course, Darrell Waltrip is two laps down. Dave Marcus in car number 71. They're putting a lap on uh, Sterling Marlin, not in car number 94. There you see the uh, next car back. Fourth position, yellow and white car, Ricky Rudd. He is maintaining fourth position on the field. And following him is car number nine. Bill Elliott is being shown in fifth place today. And Bill Elliott, his mother Mildred, in the hospital up in Atlanta. We want to say hello to her and, and Bill's dad, George, who are watching the race this afternoon and certainly sitting there cheering Bill on. Having a good run here, folks, and certainly we want to wish uh, Mildred a speedy recovery. She's been in the hospital since last November, and uh, our prayers and best wishes go out to her and hope that she will continue to improve. And, Ken, she has shown improvement in recent weeks. I you and I both talked it's to definitely. George Elliott this yeah. morning, and uh, it was good to hear that uh, Mildred Elliott is steadily improving and George said he thought that Earnhardt was going to be tough <laughs> let's go to Mike Joy well, one spot behind Bill Elliott is Rusty Wallace wearing new colors this year we've not been in the pits of the Winston Cup champ today but he's in sixth place and that's one better than he's ever finished in the 500 in fact his average finish here is 21st Harold Elliott for a team that came down here without a lot of horsepower you folks are hanging on pretty well well, yeah, you know, we had some problems, Mike, with the car and the engine. We, it was off a little bit on both the ends. It was just took us a while to get it sorted out. You know, it's a new car, and uh, we had a lot more work to do than we, than we realized. We came down the track and changed after the 24-hour race, and our car had loosened up. And, well, we got it fixed, and we're hanging on. But uh, I tell you, if, if anybody's going to beat Earnhardt today, they've got to shoot his tires out. <laughs> <laughs> that may well be. Let's go to Dave Despain. We're down here with the guys who are looking out for snipers with a 27-second lead. That's about all that can stop them. The team of Dale Earnhardt, do they look confident? Do they look secure? Well, they do indeed. The only possible glitch is that last pit stop. They tell us it will come about lap 180, give or take a lap or two. And right alongside the youngster, Derek Cope's crew, gets ready to try to challenge this juggernaut. Juggernaut it is, this car number three. As we get down to the last 25 laps, 25 to go. Here in this 32nd annual Daytona 500 for $2 million. We saw this lead first being held by this man. Then Schrader came back to take it twice. His car went up in smoke, and it has been an Earnhardt story ever since. Got a half lap lead. Sorry. Yeah, that was a big help. We need to see some more cars, though. Uh, coming back, start with three, then... Start with three, <coughs> then show me 27, 15, 30. 27, 15, 30. Just so I have it. In fact, I think that's the 15 right in front of him. About to be lapped. <coughs> yeah. yeah, he's about to lap him. That could be part of the story, but I want to see 27 and 6. I'm sorry, 27, 1, 15, and 30. Okay. Maybe this board is off. Yeah. Hold it a second. We're checking. That's the eighth place car just got lapped. Mm. 
Okay, yeah, it's the next car to be left. He's running seventh. Yep. <clears throat> If you don't come back quick, he's going to be gone. Wow. That's all. When is the last time we've seen such domination, guys? We ought to talk about that a little. Here? Yeah. Not so since not since we've been doing it. Not since, since well, what about Baker in 1980? 70. I mean, he had everybody covered strong. 75 was the last time anybody lapped the field. <clears throat> 76, I'm sorry. Yeah. 76. 76 is when Petty and Pearson had their big wreck. Right, yeah. Exactly. They wasn't, they were, yeah, that was a, wasn't no lap. There wasn't any lap. The two were together when they well, crashed out of four. But when he got there, it, it did it. Some 21 laps remaining, and within two, they expect Earnhardt to throw the game to the other side of the table to his pit crew, make that stop. We're on lap 179 now. Here he is, ready to lap. Car number 27, Rusty Wallace, the sixth place man, but no, he's pitting. There's the sixth place man, Rusty Wallace, and here's your leader in the key critical pit stop of the race. Dave Despain. Chocolate Myers, the gas man for this outstanding team, and they say it'll be gas only. They go with the jack to the right side in case, but it appears they will not need the tires. He spoke them coming in, but they're confident the gas is in, and he is gone in 8.2 seconds. He should be able to get back out without losing the lead. A lot of smoke as he came out. Well, as he came in on the left front and on the rear tires as he went out. I'm surprised. Yeah, of course, he locked the left front up when he came into the pits. Uh, now, they needed to get that full can of fuel in there uh, for him to be able to go the rest of the way. That is assuming that he was a very close to outer gas. Let's go to the pits and Mike Joy. Yeah, uh, Ned, as Earnhardt came by here, that did not look like smoke coming from the tire on his car. We'll check it further now that he's back up to speed. Ricky Rudd is getting right side tires from Jeff Chandler and Joey Knuckles. Danny Baxter has brought him around. And he is, wait, that's a fast number, Ricky Rudd. Here's Dave Despain. Let's find out about the gas situation. Danny Chocolate Myers fuels the car. Danny, did you get her all in there? Yeah, we're full. We're okay. You're okay all the way to the finish. How much are you going to win this thing by? 20 seconds. Is there any other problem with that car? No, nah, this goes like it's been going all day. We shouldn't have any problems. He laid up the tires coming in, but they think it will not be a problem. The car is filled with gas, or at least got the entire can they needed, and should be able to go the distance. Well, Dave, he just retook the lead after making a pit stop. Derek Cope had taken the lead as Earnhardt got back up to speed. Earnhardt has just passed Derek Cope and has taken over the lead once again. Here's his wife, Teresa, looking on and anticipating a big victory, his first ever Daytona 500 victory here. Boy, that car is awesome to look at it pull away. And Coach still has a pit stop to make. Unbelievable, this Earnhardt performance. They've and here comes Coach. before. Here is Cope coming in. This will move Bo Dine up into second and Bill Elliott into third. The way the way Earnhardt is running, uh, he could very easily lap the entire field. Dave Despain has something to say. Dave? Derek Cope is on to pit road. He has started only two. 500. He's the second place car here today. They'll go to the left side tires first. Buddy Barron changes the front tire. Kevin Jurgen changes the rear. And this is their last shot to give Cope, this amazing youngster who didn't run last year's race, some attempt at, at uh, Dale Earnhardt, the leader. We show a 1377. Not a bad stop for two tires and fuel. Let's move in and talk to the crew chief here. This guy, Buddy Parrott, won a big race at Daytona. It happened 1984, Firecracker 400. Does that sound familiar? Richard Petty was his driver then. You got anything for Dale Earnhardt today? Well, you know, Dale's been awful strong. I just wish we could maybe got a caution. They put on four tires earlier, and uh, Dale's been real strong ever since he's been here. My hat's off, though, to Keith Thornton. I'm telling you, automotive special engine today, and this pure later Pontiac, and uh, we had put Rainax on that windshield right before we started, 
And this thing's really been slick all day. Somewhat vague. Tell me about Derek Cope. You've won with Richard Petty here, but this youngster looks very impressive. I'm going to tell you what, he's got a big, strong heart. And we're going to go a lot of places this year with him. And, uh, you know, he's run real good. Uh, Bob Wickham's really providing everything for us to do it with. And, uh, we're just real happy about everything. A veteran crew chief and a young driver writing quite a story at this Daytona 500. In 1984, Cale Yarborough won this race back-to-back -back second straight year. The man in second was Dale Earnhardt. Dale Earnhardt intends to fix things this year and win this race. Yes, sir. Yeah. Understand. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, and when we come back, then how many, we got what? When we come back, we'll have about 15? <coughs> yeah, probably we, we, 17. We ought to find out from the pitch if <coughs> Wallace has to stop. Yes, sir. But I'm what more? Now. What? The 11 Bodine pitting. Seven. Got a blimp again? Blimp. That's what he's asking for. Yes, sir. Sure. Okay. <clears throat> I'm sorry. <clears throat> Thank you. Yes, ma'am. We need to know if Rusty Wallace has to stop. Does anybody know if Wallace has to stop? Can you check in the pits? Give us a report on Wallace. <coughs> yeah. On that board, where's Wallace? That's confirmed. Second. This Daytona 500 race summary is sponsored by Quaker State. The big Q, it's one tough motor oil. After 460 miles of the 32nd annual 500, 13 liters, lead changes stand at 23. Average speed with two cautions thus far, reflecting 12 laps under yellow at 167 miles an hour. Seven cars of the 42 that started have officially retired from the event. And those are Phil Parsons, Mike Alexander, Ken Schrader, Bark Dahl, Horton, out of this race, A.J. Foyt, and Robbie Moroso. All right. Let's go right to the Rusty Wallace story on Pit Road. Again, he's pulling away after taking on gas only. Jeff Bodine did the same thing while we were in commercial. Junior Johnson's crew kicked up the rear spoiler on Bodine's crew to give it more angle, to give him more downforce, and then to help him try and run down Dale Earnhardt. Rusty Wallace overshot his pitch just a moment ago. He moved to second place. But now we'll see what the scores tell us about where he is. Yeah, he overshot his pitch by two pips, about... Uh, 35 feet. It's so hot out there, well over 85 degrees. Here's the shot from the Goodyear Blimp Enterprise of this record crowd gathered here at the Daytona International Speedway. It has been record crowds all week. Dating back to last Sunday, even last Saturday for qualifying. Amazing the enthusiasm is growing for Winston Cup racing and CBS delighted to bring you the 500 and we'll be with you in Michigan this summer and for the Die Hard 500 at Talladega, Alabama at the end of July. Now these people we're seeing here, Ken, are the spotters for the drivers. It's the second set of eyes for the drivers. If there's trouble up in front of them, they notify them. They normally look about a quarter of a lap ahead of their driver and they 
have communication by two-way radio and they'll tell the driver what's going on and in many cases they're clocking the cars and letting the driver know how fast he's running and also if he needs to change his line on the racetrack. Now Dale Earnhardt doesn't need to change his line because boy he's had it right all day it seems like. I think they're saying fold the tent and pack the tools. Earnhardt's got everybody covered for just a moment and it's Earnhardt in first, Labonte in second, Elliott third, Jeff Bodine in fourth. There's Terry Labonte currently being shown in the second position. What a tremendous run for the Jackson brothers and the Elliott stable now is being shown in third spot. David Hobbs is standing by over in the infield with the Earnhardt family as they get closer and closer to their first big one. Well, I'm with Teresa and Taylor. Taylor's listening to the crew radio, and, and Teresa's very anxious to get over the pits. It looks like you might win this one. How nervous are you? Well, I'm not nervous. I'm just anxious. Um, we don't, don't have far to go, but we've got to get there. It's not over till it's over. Okay. Well, Dale's won, won just about everything else in NASCAR racing. And how badly does he really want to win this race? Well, I think immensely. Anybody like me. So. <laughs> We just have to wait and see. So right now, you're as anxious as he is to win this race. I think so. I think so. Thank you. Well, we're going to let you go over there now and get ready in that pits. And back to you, Ken, up in the tower. Well, David, this is Dan Jarrett. You know, Teresa Earnhardt comes from a racing family. Her dad is Hal Houston, who drove race cars for himself in Hickory, North Carolina for many years. Tommy Houston, still a major force in the Bush Grand National Competition. Ten laps to go. And uh, so she knows what racing's all about. She knows about the frustrations and heartaches and all of that. She knows what winning's all about because she comes from a winning racing family. Ten laps remaining. About nine and three quarters for this man. Dale Earnhardt in car number three. Terry Labonte second, Bill Elliott third, getting to the finish. <clears throat> Number 75, uh, Rick Wilson's been oiling Ooh, down. Ooh, got a spin and a crash in turn two. Big time. the track it looked like he touched the wall maybe he didn't was it Bodine yeah, he was involved Bodine is going home though he, he's coming down the straightaway oh, no, I think out. it's another car oh. it was a red car though <clears throat> Bob what did you do Bob okay. yeah okay great thank you <clears throat> so we're going to set it up for. A... Hmm. This will set them Shoot all up. up. Yep. This is something Earnhardt didn't want. No. No, they'll they'll bunch them up. Yeah, they'll get it going again. Yep. <clears throat> oh. Uh, well, it's way. What happened? Well, a car spun out. A car spun no, out. no, I tell you what, Rick Wilson was oiling up the track for two laps, and I think that was action was caused by oil on the track. See, there he is, right yeah, there, smoking, yeah. see? Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> was Bodine in fifth when that happened? Yep. But he, one lap, he was out in the, in the racing groove. Eight cars in the lead lap. for the third time today. The reason was from the car that you just saw, car number 11, in trouble, up in turn number two. Here's Mike Joy, quickly. 
Ken, they'll change the right side tires at least. No, they're going all the way around. They may have flat spot of the tires after he spun, but he'll get back up for the run to the finish. Here's Dave Despain. And Dale Earnhardt, likewise, will go with a four-tire stop. They've already loosened the left side as the crew come around to make that left side change. They now have the field on their heels, and they want everything that they can throw at them for what will be a two- or three-lap shootout at the end. After dominating all day, these guys have their back to the wall. Let's go back to Mike Joy. The five car of Ricky Rudd slid in sideways. It was the only way he could get near his pit stall. They finished the left tire tire change and had to wait until everybody else moved before he could get away. That put him back in the running order, and Mike Spoil would have been a good run for Rudd. Eight cars in the lead lap. They will be bunched and ready to fight it out to decide the 500. Now let's look at what happened to bring out the caution flag. Okay, we're riding with Jeff Bodine. with the race camp, and then you can see it start to spin around. He was looking at the infield when he should have been looking straight ahead. Of course, that's when he was spinning around. And you can see him fight the wheel. It was a 360, and then he kept going. So, Jeff Bodine not hitting anything. Right where, went Richard, around. right where Richard Petty had spun earlier today, there may have been some oil laid down by car number 75, Rick Wilson, who had been running slowly for several laps. He had been down to the bottom of the track, but there was a time when he was up in the groove. Anyway, you, yellow came out, eight cars are together to decide the 500, and they're sorting themselves out, coming out of four right now, and there's one lap before there will be races. Six laps now. There's the number 75 car. If you notice, just before Bodine's car spun, you can see a car in the upper right-hand corner of the screen letting out a lot of smoke. It may be slippery over in that part of the track. So here comes the field behind the pace car. 32nd annual Daytona 500. They always talk about over here how they used to organize great finishes by throwing a caution flag. I don't think that was no, the case here, Ned. No, no, it was a justified caution flag because when Bodine spun, you didn't know who, who how many cars were going to get it into it, so they needed to warn the other cars, get them slowed down that were coming into that turn. Fortunately, he didn't hit anything or did hit another car, didn't hit the wall. But look at this traffic jam that we got here right now. And Dale Earnhardt is back in there pretty far, but with the NASCAR rules, he is able to move up on the outside. Derek Cope, let's see, is leading this race. Here are some of the folks that have missed this 500. Neil Bonnet, 15 tries. Ricky Rudd, Terry Labonte. Schrader, Davey Allison, and you could name a whole lot more, including a guy named Ned Jarrett who yeah, won 50 races. Sure could. I, uh, I tried for a number of years myself. Came pretty close in 1963. Ran out of gas with two laps to go. Teresa Earnhardt looking on, a little anxious here now as it's a whole new game to decide this one. She didn't want that caution flag. Neither did Dale Earnhardt, Richard Childress, or any of his crew. If they get the, the green flag next time around, it'll be a five-lap dash to the checkered flag. Derek Cope is leading, and Bobby Hill in the second, and Dale Earnhardt is third. Terry Labonte is fourth. Bill Elliott fifth, and Ricky Rudd sixth, and Rusty Wallace seventh. Jennifer Finney there. Derek Cope's girlfriend looking a little anxious as he leads the field down. Cope in the Whitcomb Racing Stable car up in front as they get ready to sort out the 32nd 500. There's Bobby Hillens, number eight, right there in second spot. Dave Despain. Bad news on the radio to Richard Childress. What did your driver, Dale Earnhardt, just tell you? I said the eight car rammed him in the left rear out there. How bad is it? Any idea? I don't know. He said he hit him real hard. I don't know. You've got to come through a lot of traffic here. Are you still going to win this race? Who knows? You know, we got five laps to go. I'll guarantee you they'll be trying. These guys are not happy. They've complained to the NASCAR officials that the contention is that Bobby Hillen hit Dale Earnhardt in the left rear under yellow. And when they go back green, he'll have a damaged race car. Let's go to Mike Joy. No comment from the Hillen pit. Terry Hyde is on the radio trying to anticipate the flag and tell his driver to go and win his second Super Speedway 500-mile race. Laps to go. Hill and one at Talladega, Alabama. His only Winston Cup win. Car number eight lies second. The black number three, Earnhardt, third with five to go. Four and three quarters. Jeff Bodine right on his bumper. Bodine brought this caution flag out, but he's still running in the fourth position. Now Earnhardt trying to make a move on the inside of Hill and taking over second and brings Bodine with him. Derek Cope on the outside, down on the inside, a little crack in the windshield perhaps on the right side.
car number three. Earnhardt goes into first. Yeah, he didn't waste any time. Uh, evidently, that bump didn't hurt him. We didn't see anything there as we watched Teresa Earnhardt watch Dale Earnhardt come around. And Earnhardt still shows the dominance that he's shown here all day long. That, that traffic behind Earnhardt is fulminated for Mercury. Anything can happen there. They're so close, so fast. A snarl of cars just behind the leader. Down to four, Earnhardt has separated himself as quickly as possible from the remainder of the field. Bodine, number 11, on the inside. On the outside, it is Bill Elliott. Bill Elliott is up to fourth. They're showing Bodine as a lap down net. Oh, really? Bodine well, on a lap down. Okay, I didn't realize he lost a lap during that uh, spin. Pulling back up on Earnhardt. Comes Derek Cope in that red Chevrolet number 10. And the car number one of Terry Labonte right in there running in the third position. Derek Cope has never finished better than sixth place in any of his racing starts. This will be his first top five finish. And look at him putting the pressure on Earnhardt. Huh. It looks like that run that Rutland made a few years ago at Lake Speed. Dave Despain. Are remarkable about the Colt performance is the fact that he's doing it on used tires. His crew chief, Buddy Parrott, elected to keep him out on that caution period to take the lead in the race. Earnhardt came in and got four tires, and nonetheless, Colt's been able to come up and race with him. Here comes Terry Labonte. If the slingshot was ever called for, it would be this race today, but the carburetor plates have pretty much erased that possibility. Here you see the number five car, Ricky Rudd. He's in the sixth position. Front four, Elliott is hanging on to the tail of that draft. Bill Elliott fights the winner, 85 and 87 right there. Jeff Bodine being recorded as a lap down, giving us these incredible pictures. They get ready to sort this one out. Number three, Earnhardt in front, and Derek Cope driving the race of his career, stays in second place. The Spanaway Washington campaigner moves in again on number three, Earnhardt. And look at him moving up here, that pure leader sponsored car. Pure leader is being sold now by its parent company because it doesn't fit in the scheme of things. And here it is running second to the Daytona 500, maybe winning it. The white flag coming down to Dale Earnhardt. One lap to go. Does anybody have anything left to cope with the man black? Here's what's going to happen. Maybe. I thought Terry Labonte was going to try to move down and take over second place, and if he does, that'll just open it up for Earnhardt to move away. We'll see. But naturally, every one of them wants to gain a position, whether it's uh, for from fourth to third or whatever, but if, if they get side by side, it'll help Earnhardt. This is the half a lap to go. Four-car shootout to decide it all. Dale Earnhardt. Here comes Duke Coke down on the inside. Whoa. Earnhardt has Earnhardt. Dropping back, something does amiss. Here comes the field driving for the finish. And on the outside, it is car number 10, Derek Cope. Something amiss on the Earnhardt car. Coming to the line, it's Labonte pulling up. And an amazing finish. The Whitcomb Racing Team has won it. Unbelievable. And it looked like Earnhardt had a tire go down maybe as he went into the turn. And Nicole crying a little bit. Fred Cope's first top five finish, his first victory, comes in the Daytona 500. A remarkable day of sport. Unbelievable. Bob Whitcomb, who brought a team out three years ago, had nothing but misfortune and bad luck. And Rick Hendrick, who gave a car to one driver today to be in this race, literally gave it to him just, just to get him out of here. Hot Strickland, after uh, he was involved in altercation, now he's put some motors together for this team, and they've won the biggest race of all. It's a great win for the Northwest. When you think of the years that they've had drivers come down here from the Northwest to race, this is the first time they have ever tasted a victory in the Daytona 500. Look again at what happened. Well, Earnhardt looked like he had things in command. All of a sudden, his Chevrolet just slows, and he goes up into the second groove. Something happened to that car, I guess the engine. I thought he had a tire go down, but I believe it was something else. He lost power. Cope took advantage of it. Here's Earnhardt coasting around. Cope comes on to win. Terry Labonte will come home with a second-place finish. Bill Elliott in third. Let's go to Dave Despain. Derek Cope still has a problem. He's on the radio to the crew chief, Buddy Farrell. What did he say? He don't know where Victor Lane is. <laughs> Can you figure out how to navigate him in there? What? It's uh, 
It's really a wonderful deal. I tell you, we pitted. I came up here and pit behind, uh, beside Richard Childress today because I'm going to tell you what, they're a great crew, and they got a Chevrolet. And yesterday, out in practice, I knew, I knew who we had to run with. I knew who we had to beat. We had the best car in practice, and uh, and we had to beat Dale Earnhardt, and we did today. And my hats off to Richard and his crew and Kurt Summerdean and all of them. You raced him very hard right at the end, even though you didn't have the fresh tires. Did you have a shot at him if he hadn't had trouble? Well, you walked up to me and asked me, did I have anything up my sleeve? And, uh, you know, I just wanted to say that my hat's off to Goodyear also. We ran, uh, ran Goodyear tires today, almost uh, 250 laps on the left side. So the engineer came up to me and said, buddy, you need to change them lefts. I said, I'm not going to change any tires. A veteran crew chief guides his young driver to victory lane at Daytona. What a story. Derek Culp, Spanaway, Washington, becomes the fourth driver to make the Daytona 500 his first career victory. You'll meet him in a moment. How many guys have won it on the, on the last lap? That's like that. A lot, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Sir, you gonna come? Okay. Okay, thank you. I'll wave, I'll wave you up. Yes, sir. Okay. Can we have that monitor? Hey, where do you do it in Tell me when we're ten, when we're about five back, and we'll bring them out. Hell of a job. That's up to Larry. <laughs> yeah, Jennifer. Derek Cope. Well, maybe James Buster Douglas has won the Daytona 500 because coming here today, nobody, perhaps nobody, gave this man a shot to be here in victory lane. Derek Cope. Hop on down here. Has won the Daytona 500. Can you believe it? Absolutely not. I'll tell you what, you know, in my wildest dreams, you know, you, you, you always come down here with optimism, but you know, this is this is the one that it loses everybody and Darrell Walter did it last year You know for the first time in his career and it is a pleasure to have the pure letter Chevrolet aluminum up front and take the win like this It's it's a dream come true. You play professional baseball You came down here to race with virtually no money last year And now you've won the biggest prize in all of this sport. Tell me about the pass for the lead Well, you know Earnhardt was dominant all day long. We I there's no way I was gonna get him I was just trying to hold off Terry Levani, but he blew a tire going in the last turn He did a heck of a job holding that car in line. I went to the bottom side and and had to win, but uh, I'll tell you, Dale was a dominant car, but that pure there Chevrolet Lumina is, is number one in, in victory lane. Very congratulations. Let's go to David Hobbs. Bobby Hillen, Dale Earnhardt said on his radio that you bumped him during the caution. Did you do that? I didn't think so. You know, he passed me, uh, but he's still under the caution, and NASCAR told me to go back around him, and I'm not sure if he knew what to do, so he was keeping me back there, and it was just real confusing. I finally got by him, but he, you know, he went right back by me without any trouble. I was just trying to get the best position we could, and a car ran good. We didn't get any tires the last pit stop. That hurt us, and we, we got banged around a little bit, but uh, this is a pretty good finish for the Snickers car. Well, you nearly won the 500, but not this year. Ken, you got more for us up in the top. One year ago, Bob Whitcomb nearly disbanded his team. They had run out of money. There was no hope left. But he stuck with it, and now he has won the great American race. 
with Derek Hope as driver. Okay, I'm going to do a line over the order of finish. Next on CBS Sports this afternoon, it's the Celtics and the Lakers coming up. So stay with us for that for sure. What a story here. Derek Cope, as we look at these standings, wanted to be a baseball player, grew up in San Diego, California, played at Whitman College, suffered a knee injury, and it ended his baseball career. And at 21 years of age, he had never been near a race car. His brother had one. He tried it. He was hooked and he's been with it ever since. Let's go to David Hobbs. Dale, what the heck happened on the last lap? We ran over some debris and cut a right rear tire down, David. Uh, just a quarter of a lap away from Victor. Much you could do about it. I was sitting with your wife and it was absolute devastation in your motorhome. We're all real sorry for you. Better luck next time. That was the scene in those final moments before it all came apart in the 12th 500 for Dale Earnhardt. This is the scene in victory lane right now for Derek Cope and Bob Whitcomb and company. For Ned Jarrett, Chris Economaki, Mike Joy, Dave Despain, and David Hobbs, I'm Ken Squire saying so long from Daytona Beach. The CBS Sports Special. The Daytona 500. Is sponsored by Budweiser. Beachwood aged for that clean, crisp taste. This Bud's for you. First Brands Corporation. Maker of STP oil treatment and son of a gun protectant. And by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? Daytona 500 has been a presentation of CBS Sports.